So, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think we can start now the workshop on renewable heating and cooling solutions. Uh, I'm just checking. Okay. Um, I will just spend a few words about the motivation we have to, to start this uh, event. Uh, we really feel that uh, the, the topic on renewable heating and cooling solution is uh, uh, pressing and urgent now uh, for all the uh, European countries. And I guess that uh, the wide participation of several projects on this uh, topic is, uh, is actually uh, an important uh, topic of discussion for these years, but probably also for the uh, next uh, once. Um, since we received so, so many applications for participating in this workshop, we decided to cluster the workshop in four uh, different topics in which, of course, renewable heating and cooling is the common topic. Uh, but then we try to classify the, the participating projects in different uh, applications or even a different TRM, basically. So uh, I will uh, just move quickly to the agenda. Um, of course, uh, we'll have uh, Olga Rio Suarez from the European Commission in uh, giving uh, her uh, welcome to the, um, yeah, to the workshop. And then, uh, um, I mean, the overview is actually the one that I'm presenting right now. Then we'll move uh, quickly to the uh, subsection that uh, at the end is the real, uh, let's say, core of this workshop. And uh, as you will see, we uh, dedicated four, five minutes per, for, uh, per each presentation. And then for each subsection, we'll have uh, roughly 15 minutes for question and answer from the attendees. And of course, uh, also some common topics of discussion uh, among the projects that are presented. We'll, on, we'll start now, 2 o'clock PM, and we'll have uh, around uh, um, um, three, 15 uh, virtual coffee break for uh, 10 minutes. And then we will go straight until uh, the end of the workshop, which will end uh, 5 p.m. So um, I would say that we can now uh, leave the word to uh, Olga Rio Suarez for her uh, welcome and also yeah, for the advice about this topic uh, from European Commission. OK. Thanks, Andrea. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I want to start by welcoming you all here today. And uh, as my presenter said, I'm Olga Rio. I'm policy officer at the European Commission in the Directorate General of Research and Innovation, working within the unit Clean Energy Transition in the Directorate Clean Planet. So I think it's quite pertinent for us, the topic we will discuss today. Today's event is about renewable energy for heating and cooling, but I want to add also that it is also about the development of technologies and processes which are innovative, sustainable and socially fair for having not only energy efficient but healthier built environments and also for turning industry from a carbon source into a carbon sink, as also President von der Leyen highlighted in her recent State of the Union address. Let me share with you some general thoughts about the significance of these topics we will discuss today for paving the way to this clean energy transition and also for helping us to face the challenge for becoming the first climate neutral economy by 2050. It is evident that we need to be now faster, even more than the past, for making Europe more competitive to respond to the financial and health crisis generated by the pandemic, and also for achieving the new target that 55% CO2 emission reductions that is below 1990 and uh, by 2030. If we have a look in the different strategies and in the different documents we are managing, we can say that the European Green Deal, the EU Recovery Strategy, the 2030 Climate Plans, 
as well as several related financial instruments such as the Horizon 2020 Green Deal call recently launched and the future Horizon Europe program as well as other funds like the Invest EU funds or the Innovation Fund, uh, flag the need to boost the EU economy, reduce emissions and energy poverty. So we need to create sustainable phrases for living. Taking this into mind, what is unquestionable is that the fundamental role that research and innovation plays for investing in new technologies and for bringing them into the market, even if this requires a strong transdisciplinary risk governance as the one implemented under some instruments in Horizon 2020 and also in the future program Horizon Europe. For instance, the partnerships or also the new instruments like our emissions. With regards to the new emission reduction target of 55% for 2030, we can say that President von der Leyen stated that it is ambitious but achievable and beneficial for Europe. She also flagged that what is good for climate is good for business and is good for us all. Also, she added that it was needed to look in depth at every sector to see how fast we could go and how to do it in a responsible evidence-based way. Saying this and taking this last sentence in consideration that uh, uh, we come back again to the event of today, this workshop. We need to follow up and elaborate all our agendas in heating and cooling and renewables for heating and cooling and also in the case of buildings and industry in a responsible evidence-based way. So our strategy need to be based on that and for being based on that I will want to stop here and give the floor to the representatives of uh, of course, to the moderator and the representatives of the 14 projects that will expose today the follow-up, as they will be the ones that will let us know which is the level of maturity of these technologies that we will need for future developing or meeting our goals. Thank you very much, and I will stop here. Thank you very much for your presentation. So I think now we can move to the uh, first session of this workshop, which is about the uh, application of the renewable uh, living and cooling uh, uh, in industrial fields. We will have three uh, ongoing projects uh, presenting their activities here. The first one is uh, uh, the iCool project, which will be presented by Professor Uli Jacob, who is the managing director of uh, uh, Dr. Jacob uh, Energy Research and also um, yeah, honorary professor at the University of Applied Sciences uh, in Stuttgart and is uh, involved in several uh, ongoing activities uh, uh, in the field, especially as already a, a agent for the solar heating and cooling uh, task 75 about solar cooling for some storage under the International Energy Agency umbrella. So, Uri, please. Yeah, thanks, Andrea. Maybe you should give me the moderator rights, otherwise I cannot share my slides. So, uh, good afternoon to you all. No, Thank I have you. not the rights so far. That's... All right, let's do it again. You should be okay now. Now, now, now it starts, right. Perfect. So now you it. should see the slides. Okay, so yeah, thanks to you all uh, for this uh, organization of this uh, nice event today, especially on renewable and heating and cooling. Uh, as Andrea was already mentioning, my name is Uli Jacob. I'm representing today the High Cool Project, uh, which is a European funded project looking into um, use of solar heat uh, for vapor uh, production, but also looking into cooling. So we have here a combination uh, of two different demands uh, in uh, two industries. 
sectors, uh, which I will present in the next five minutes to you. Just to give you some brief aspects about the project itself, uh, we have started in May 2018. It's a three years project. We just uh, asked for an amendment to get four years through the COVID-19 uh, situation and uh, because we have some delays with our installations, but something which you will see in one of the next slides. So we have uh, in total 15 partners. I will not bore you with each of them, but just to give you an idea which companies and institutes are uh, uh, partners within that project. Uh, and again, you probably can see here also CNR, so with Andrea and his group. But coming now to the, to the deep facts uh, about the project itself, so what we are dealing with in this uh, high cool project, I just want to uh, show you some of our key objectives so that you get a, a first understanding what we are dealing with. So the project mission of this uh, high cool project is to use solar thermal collectors, a special kind of that kind of collectors, a Fresnel collector, which is then uh, combined with a hybrid heat pump system which is uh, um, using this, this kind of thermal heat to produce cold. And um, the overall target is, uh, of course, to improve the industrial integration of solar heating systems itself uh, to achieve uh, um, total uh, costs effective solutions and uh, to generate trust in those kind of solutions, which I think is one of the most important things within these uh, projects, which we will see today in this uh, uh, workshop. And uh, Haikul wants to, to, to help here and to, to, to show that those kind of uh, solutions uh, within uh, using solar thermal collectors and combining that probably uh, such as uh, done here in this project with thermal cooling uh, to have uh, some uh, systems which are really working and uh, where uh, clients can get some trust in such technologies. So the overall objective and the key performance indicators somehow which we want to achieve within that projects are that we want to, of course, reduce the energy consumption in these uh, two industry sectors, which we are looking into up to 75% uh, for this uh, hybrid heat pump system. We want to achieve a electrical EER, so energy efficiency ratio up to six, which is not that bad. You will see that in one of the next slides. And uh, of course, the overall efficiency increase should be about 25% for this kind of uh, combined compressor and uh, sorption chiller. Now, um, coming from the key objectives, I just want to introduce to you briefly the key equipment. Uh, as mentioned before already, we have this uh, combination of a hybrid adsorption chiller with a compressor chiller. Uh, you see here in this uh, sketch up uh, one uh, configuration, which is a cascade system which means that we cool the uh, condenser of the uh, compressor chiller with the sorption uh, uh, module and with that we can achieve high uh, uh, ERs especially in regions where we have high ambient temperatures where usually compressor chillers have not that good uh, efficiency so that's why we can increase this uh, up to uh, the, the number of six and as mentioned before we have the solar steam generation with a Fresnel collector so concentrating collector which is allowing you to achieve temperature levels up to 250 degrees, which is then somehow could be used also for steam generation. Now, one important aspect in this high cool project is the integration. The integration measures on two pilot sites. So we have two pilot sites, both in the region of Barcelona in Spain. Uh, one is in the chemistry sector and the other one is in the food sector. And it's quite important to, to show such system integrations of solar heat how to you can combine different demands and supply sites and uh, how to deal with that. And one aspect, especially in the project, is also the monitoring system, where you probably can see on the right hand side some uh, two sketchups, two screenshots, how we deal with that. One important thing is to mention that we have just started with the civil works uh, to install now the, the, the collectors on site uh, to the COVID-19 situation with some delay. Uh, but that's what I mentioned already before. Uh, during that time, we had a lot of other things to do, especially during COVID-19. So we are not uh, waiting for, of course, for the civil works. Uh, one major aspect also in that high cool project is the testing of the different components, uh, especially the hybrid heat pumps. And that's what is, uh, has been done, for example, at the CNR in Italy, where we have this uh, combination of the sorption chillers modules and compressor chiller modules, 
and the colleagues there have evaluated and, and met performance maps uh, for the different chiller configurations, especially for different temperature levels. So I will not go into all of the testing results. You can uh, look at that later on again, of course, if the slides are available. But what I want to mention is especially that the results of the testing already showed that we have an uh, um, increase of the overall efficiency ER of the systems of 15 to 25 percent, which is again matching with our uh, expectations with the goals which we had set to us uh, as a KPI in that project. Now, there are a lot of other things, of course, which you can uh, have a look also on our webpage. What I want to mention at last thing is that we also have uh, created a pre feasibility simulator tool, um, which allows you for Europe um, to get the first idea if this high cool technology probably would be a good solution for you in, in for your industry purposes and uh, that you can investigate it with some uh, easy to understand uh, um, factors. So looking into the uh, solar direct normal radiation of your of your um, um, location um, to get an idea about the temperature outside, of course, and the required cooling process temperatures and your electricity prices, probably, you know, of course, as an industry and uh, to get an estimation of your full load operation hours. And then you get an as an output uh, back um, if this high cool technology, which I've presented to you briefly now, is something which is probably worthwhile to be more investigated in detail for your personal personal uh, um, belongings, which means for your uh, uh, client or for your industry sector. So that's what we just uh, done so far. It's a short summary of the high cool project. If you want to know more about us and the project itself, then of course you can. Uh, have a look on our website also follow us on linkedin or twitter uh, to get more information stay tuned what happens next uh, half year to one and a half years within that project so that's it from our side thank you thank you Uli. Uh, more or less keep the time thank you uh, so we ne we now move to the next one, which is uh, uh, Guglielmo Cioni presenting uh, Sheet to Fair project. Uh, Guglielmo is the vice president of business development at the uh, TVP Solar in Switzerland, which is the manufacturer of high vacuum flats or thermal panels that will be part of the, the project uh, Sheet to Fair. And he is also vice chair of the European Solar Thermal Technology Platform and member of the board of the Renewable Leading Energy Platform. So, William, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you for the introduction. I hope you're seeing my screen now. I'm going to uh, introduce to you the project Ship to Fair, a project that has been started already two years. It's been uh, financed by the Horizon 2020 European Commission program. And as uh, uh, the title says, it's about the integration of uh, solar heat in industrial process and in particular uh, for those processes related to food and agro industries. So as I said, this has been financed by the Commission with a budget of 8 million euros, about 8 million euros. It will last until 2022. Uh, we are having also some slight delays so or probably it's going to be six months longer than, uh, than expected due to the current situation. Uh, basically, the whole project is about all the aspects related to the integration of solar heat in uh, industrial process. And when I say integration, I mean uh, not only the connection of any solar heat uh, system to to the to the plant uh, to the plant uh, to the factory uh, hydro thermohydraulic circuits, but also. Uh, uh, several important aspects related to the to the control of such system and to the optimization of uh, energy production and uh, therefore the uh, maximization of the impact of renewable energy in the decarbonization of such industries. Uh, in practice, there are several such challenges related to the to the concept of introducing uh, solar heat, uh, including its uh, predictability and uh, uh, actual um, possibility to, to, to feed existing uh, thermohydraulic circuits with the, with the solar heat that has these specific characteristics and, uh, and temperature range. So what we did, we uh, tried to uh, 
to face different challenges with different tools and in particular just to go uh, quickly with tools that are going to be developed by the partners that uh, can be divided mostly in four categories i mean for example tdp solar is one of the technology partners that will provide this in highly innovative uh, new type of solar thermal collector, the high vacuum flat plate collector, as well as industrial solar that is providing, for example, the Fresnel and uh, energy and uh, engineering um, and uh, procurement contracting provided by Solid. Then the other uh, categories are, of course, the coordinator, Circe is a large uh, consulting based in Spain, and then there are um, developers of specific inform, uh, information technology tools as well as uh, experts and host uh, host factories that will of course uh, be the target for our demonstration activities so the main uh, the most important uh, point is that we not only will develop such tools but we will test them in, re in real life scale in different contexts uh, in the agrofood industry. In particular, we're going to have uh, demonstrations at uh, four sites. Uh, one is in Portugal for uh, sugar making. The second is uh, foie gras, so meat production factory in France, in the south of France. And there will be um, spirits and beverage production represented by Martini and Rossi, the famous brand in uh, north of Italy, uh, near Turin. And finally, uh, wine production, uh, in particular for the process of fermentation and stabilization in Spain at uh, Bodega Troda in La Rioja. Of course, the, the, the whole project involves not only the demonstration, but also the development of a replication tool, I'm going to talk to you very quickly, a control tool to uh, optimize the integration of solar heat with the, with the user's uh, energy circuit, and some activities, of course, of dissemination and training that will be devoted to try to distribute as much as possible the results and the methodologies implemented in the project sheet. So for the replication tool, this is a tool that is going to be a sort of a decision helping tool for those who are willing to engage solar thermal energy in, in their industrial process. So it's, a, it's basically a calculator that uh, with a very nice user interface for all the European industries and not only European to understand how suitable this is uh, as a solution for their uh, decarbonization scopes and it will provide results, uh, preliminary results, with uh, simulations about uh, a certain location and temperature range on how much they can actually expect from solar energy. Uh, the control tool, as I said, is a, a predictive uh, um, model uh, capable of providing, uh, let's say, real-time data for the, for the perfect uh, uh, integration of the solar heat into the existing uh, plant seed. Let's talk about the demo site. Uh, wait, this is the impact of, that we expect from the demo site also in terms of emission reduction and energy production. But I would go quickly to show you what has been done already. This is uh, the first demo site installed in the Bodegas Roda. It's based on a technology of evacuated pipes and we provide heat to uh, heat and cool to the system. Uh, of course, the, 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 the winemaking entails also a perfect control of temperature for the fermentation and for the, uh, for the, for the production of the wine. Therefore, uh, we are going to provide heat also to an absorption cooling machine, uh, similar to what uh, the similar concept to what has been uh, shown you by, by Uli just before, uh, and they will control the temperature of the room where the malolactic fermentation uh, happens. In Martini and Rossi, uh, this is a project developed uh, with the TVP solar technology, uh, we're going to uh, really to bring uh, the innovation a bit uh, further because we are going to produce with flat plates temperature in the range of 175 uh, degrees uh, in a northern uh, Italy city, so not a high radiance place, to reach uh, the production of steam 
for the whole uh, factory at 150 degrees. So in order to max, this is also interesting because we decided to develop a dual use of the solar field. During the summer, where the sun is shining most, we will reach higher temperature and provide steam. During the winter, we will just reduce the temperature and provide uh, uh, solar, uh, solar space heating to the whole uh, to the whole building. This means to be maximum. Sorry yes. to interrupt. May I remind you that we all have five minutes to present the project, so I will kindly ask you to go toward the conclusion shortly. Right. Thank you. It's near the conclusion. Uh, other two uh, demos are going to be developed in Larnodi and in RAR. As I said, these are based on uh, industrial Fresnel uh, mirrors and uh, and flat plates. This is also an interesting application for the industrial processes because it's a cascade application, first the preheating of the boiler and then heating of a large tank. Then we will have, of course, the capacity building program, which this is part, this seminar is part of it, as well as dissemination. We have already installed a dissemination and training facility at CA Cadarache in France. This is a, a system that will be available for the development of more dissemination activities about solar for industrial process in the agri-food. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Guglielmo. Sorry for uh, rushing you, <laughs> but it's as you know we've got many many different uh, speakers and we want to get time for the Q and A. We have to keep it short. So I will now introduce the next speaker. I think uh, my colleague Andrea has some connectivity issue. Uh, so I'll give the floor to Valérie from uh, CEA. CEA being also a partner of Chip to Fair, as you saw that. Um, so I'll give you control, Valérie, to share your screen. We can see you now, and the floor is yours. Yeah, we can see your slide. Thank you. This is a, the good one. The good. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah okay. And, yeah. Again, five minutes max. Thank you very much, yes. Valérie. Thank you. So my name is Valérie Vivian from CEA. I'm the coordinator of the the friendship project, and I will give you a short overview of the project uh, right now. Uh, first, as uh, at, as that had been shown by uh, Guglielmo uh, with the ship to fair project, um, solar heat can already be used for agro food industrial processes. That means mainly uh, for processes under 150 degrees. I mentioned 120, but this means in the low temperature range. And the friendship project aims to demonstrate that the solar heat can also be a reliable user-friendly, high-quality and cost-effective resource to meet the heat requirements for other industrial sectors as textile, plastic, wood, metal and chemistry. And we want to address the mid-temperature range. The project started in May this year. This is a four-year project with 5 million euro budget. It has been funded by uh, European Commission uh, through the REST7 uh, call dedicated to solar energy in industrial processes and more specifically on the mid-temperature range. In the um, consortium, there is uh, 10 partners, four RTOs, uh, um, CEA, Sintef, Nix and Ines, and also uh, six companies. So we have uh, Absolicon and Industrial Solar who are um, concentrated solar techno providers. Uh, there is RINA and uh, AMIRES um, that are engineering and consultancy companies. And we have two end users with us, SONAI, which is a multinational group managing a wide portfolio of businesses, and Clariant, which, we, which is uh, one of the world's leading company in the chemical industry. So if we look to um, the, um, how the, the, the project has been erected. There, there is a four pillars for the project. The, the first one is to increase the temperature supply to the processes. The second one is to open application to cooling, not only heating. Uh, also, uh, the third pillar is to support the solar stability and so the produce, uh, stable production of heat and uh, to go to a uh, better integrability into, into the processes. So I will switch this one. Um, 
if we look to the the concept the friendship concepts there there are two the the ship 200 and ship 300 and they will be able to supply together heat at temperature up to 300 degrees and um, in parallel negative cold at temperature down to minus 40 degrees so the ship 200 um, ship 200 system sorry uh, consists of uh, parabolic soup concentrators solar field uh, with uh, heat, heat storage, heat pump, and uh, chiller. And uh, this will be uh, uh, validated, uh, the system, uh, through a prototype that will be erected in Grenoble, in France, um, in uh, CEA pre premises. And um, the SHIP 300 system, um, there is a, a slight difference on the heat generation side, where the, um, the the heat pump is replaced by the linear frenal receiver that uh, in order to deliver uh, heat at higher temperature. So for the ship 300 uh, system, it will be uh, numerically validated in relevant conditions with the data from, from our end, end users, uh, from site from, uh, from Deutschland, Portugal, and Spain. Uh, the expected improvement uh, during the project and uh, by regard of uh, standard, standard ship solutions, uh, we will uh, work on the low cost solar collectors uh, with uh, work on improving the absorptance of uh, selective cooling and also the, to improve the heat transfer by the using nanoparticles in uh, heat transfer fluids. We will work on a very high temperature heat pump concept that enabled continuous and stable heat supply uh, at uh, targeted temperature between 180 degrees, this is for the short terms uh, target, and 250 degrees is for the longer term. Um, an innovative component of the system will be the combined uh, thermal storage. This means uh, this is a high density uh, storage that will be able to store the heat from the solar heat loop, but also from the process loop. So this will be a, an important um, uh, equipment really in, in close relation to the process. Um, another development concerns the coal production, and we will work on two different technologies, and the absorption chillers, but also the ejector chillers. And finally, uh, as we are talking about um, a complex system, uh, we will also have a piece of work on uh, an advanced control management that will allow the, the enhancement of the quality and availability of heat to match the process demands and rationalize the use of the existing energy sources. So, and at the end, uh, the, the main the aim of SHIP 200 and SHIP 300 system is to decrease by 30% the CO2 and air pollutant emission of the, in, in the industrial site, the, the system will be installed. I think I make it short, so thank you for your attention. Stay tuned with the Friendship Project, and we'll take another opportunity to visit Aix-les-Bains, which is a very nice place where I live and work right now. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Valérie, and indeed we should have been uh, all of us in Aix-les-Bains today. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this very nice lake. So we, we are really sorry for not being there again, but I think given the I am the here natural, for you. I am here for you. <laughs> it was probably a wise decision to make this event online. So thanks for yeah. uh, sticking to the time, uh, Valérie. Uh, we, we don't have a question so far in the from the audience. However, uh, I'd like to ask perhaps to all of our three speakers, Guglielmo, uh, Uli, and you, Valerie. Um, so from, from your perspective in, in these three projects, uh, for you, which, which is the main or which are the main barriers that you see for a wide, develop, for a wide deployment of the solar heat in industries? And, and basically, uh, depending on those barriers, how are you addressing them in, in your projects? Yeah, Udi, yeah. So maybe I, I start. Um, 
from our perspective, especially with the things which we have learned here in the high cool project, uh, especially with the industry, with the different industry sectors you're dealing with, it's not that known that solar heat as a technology is really available for processes to, to do somehow deal with uh, uh, solar steam or maybe also convert it to cooling. So that's one of the major barriers that uh, the awareness of that kind of technology is not that in the industry really available. So that's why we do a lot of things also in e-learning and uh, with workshops, of course, as the others also trying to do that. And the other thing is, especially then, if you come uh, really on the ground, which means if you have the chance really to install something, and thanks to this uh, project and also to the others, we have the chance to have some some demo sites. Then you face uh, usually uh, um, some problems or the, the next uh, barriers, especially in the integration of such systems in existing processes. So those are the two things which are really somehow uh, influencing this kind of technology to get it more widespread. And at the end, of course, it's also uh, something about cost, but I think there the colleagues can tell some more about that. Thank you, Uli. Valérie, Uli Gelmo, if you want to yes, add if I may, uh, I think uh, Uli pointed out the uh, most important problem is that uh, factory managers, uh, they care about the production. The, the, their value is in the production. So whatever uh, threatens to uh, change things and introduce risks for the production is never welcome. So our, uh, our approach is to demonstrate that uh, our solution, uh, first of all, are not so difficult to integrate, and this I think we are doing, and that they provide a, a real benefits to the, to the, uh, to the to the factory and to the production of the of any goods, in particular of the food uh, food energy. So I think this it takes a lot to convince them to to change their mentality. But uh, demonstration is the only way. And I think that uh, with our project as well as the others, demonstration will uh, will prove to them that this is safe to use, that it's easy to use, and it will not introduce any additional. Uh, uh, problematics uh, in the management of the day-to-day. -day. This is, uh, I guess, uh, the most important uh, barrier to, 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 to uh, or gap to close. Awareness is another one, but uh, convincing, I think, is also the next step. Just can I add something? I have the. Sure. Can Go you ahead, hear me? Yes. Yeah. Just uh, yes, awareness uh, on my side is is uh, really a barrier. So uh, during the project, uh, the friendship project, we will uh, try to to give an update for the best practices um, document in in industry. The brief. I don't know if you're aware of this kind of document, but we will try to 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 introduce solar solar heat in those kind of documents, and. On my side, one other barrier, I think it's a, a clear uh, policy on the ta carbon tax, as we all know that uh, it could clearly <laughs> help those kinds of uh, technology to, to go quickly to the market now. That's my answer. Thank you very totally, much. Totally all support it. carbon tax, uh, believe me. Thank you very much to, to all of you. Great presentations and a really interesting project. So uh, I think with that, we'll move to the next uh, part of this workshop. I think Andrea must be back. Uh, hopefully solve the Hello. technical problems. Yeah, we can hear hey, you. Bye. So I'm really and sorry for this, but uh, we had uh, an unexpected uh, issue with the network, so I had to switch to my mobile somehow to, to follow up. So thank you again, and I think now we can move to the next um, section of the workshop, which is about uh, uh, storage solution for renewable heating and cooling support in buildings. Uh, we will have uh, four uh, European projects presenting here. So um, I would like to start with the iBuild project, who will be presented by Gabriel Zembiski from the University of Lleida. He is a, a researcher at the University of Lleida since 2010 and is also a part time lecturer in um, the Rea Research Group uh, in the same university. 
Please double the floor is yours. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, Andrea, for your introduction. So I will try to be very brief and stick to the five minutes max. Uh, so I will present uh, the hybrid project, which uh, this is the outline of my presentation. I will explain hybrid in, in a nutshell, uh, the overall concept of what we are developing, and then I will name a few critical aspects in the implementation of the, of the project. So um, this is a research and innovation action. The project started in October uh, 2017 and it will end in March uh, 2022. So initially it was for four years and we were granted a six months of extension due to COVID situation. The overall uh, contribution from the European Union is about 6 million euros and the consortium is quite big. It has 20 partners from nine countries and the project is coordinated by COMSA, which is a Spanish company. And uh, the technical coordinator uh, is the University of Lleida. So here you can see the logos of all partners and the, at the bottom, the, the link to the website of the project. So um, the, the aims of, uh, of HiBuild is to develop two innovative hybrid storage concepts. The first one is aimed uh, mainly for cooling uh, supply uh, in Mediterranean climate regions and the second one is primarily meant for uh, providing heating and domestic hot water uh, in continental climate regions. So both concepts are based on a few innovative components such as a compact sorption module in the case of the Mediterranean system, a high density latent storage based on phase change materials in both systems, a reversible vapor compression heat pump uh, also in both systems, and um, a DC bus interconnection between the electrical uh, components. And the whole system will be properly managed by uh, advanced control, which uh, will implement uh, smart control, artificial intelligence um, technologies or techniques in a building energy management system. And the system will be validated in three different demo sites, which are the ones here in this map. So the first one is Almatred in the northeast of Spain, close to Barcelona, let's say, where the Mediterranean system will be tested. Then second, we have uh, another demo in Langenwang in Austria, where the continental concept will be tested. And uh, the third demo site is in Cyprus, in Aglantia, where the Mediterranean system will be tested. So let me briefly explain you the, 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 the concept of, the, of both systems. With regards to the Mediterranean system, the core of the system is a heat pump coupled with a sorption module, with a sorption chiller in the condenser side of the heat pump. And at the evaporator side, it is uh, coupled with uh, low temperature latent storage. The idea is to enhance the efficiency of the heat pump. The heat pump is driven by a DC bus, uh, which is connected to a, a PV panel system and to an electric storage, uh, an electric battery to store the surplus of electricity produced. On the other hand, the sorption module is driven by hot water that comes from a field of solar thermocollector of Fresnel type. Uh, with regards to the continental system, uh, which is mainly aimed to produce heating and uh, domestic hot water, here uh, the heat pump, there is also a heat pump driven from a DC bus connected to also to PV panels and electric uh, storage. And uh, in this case, the, at the compressor exit, so where the hot refrigerant coming out from the heat pump, uh, this refrigerant is used, the, the, the sensible part of this energy is used to uh, charge uh, the energy in, a, let's say, high temperature latent storage uh, at around 65 degrees C. So, and, and this energy then is used to supply domestic hot water when, when needed. 
or at least to help in, in the production of domestic hot water. So uh, just to mention a few critical aspects of the implementation of the project, we found that the integration of the heat pump with the sorption chiller and the latent storage in the Mediterranean system case was really a, a challenge. Then uh, another critical aspect is the, the control logic that uh, should be defined, developed and implemented in, in the system, at the demos made, basically. And also um, the continuous uh, monitoring of the system after its installation. I have to say that now the system are not yet uh, installed in the demos, we are about to or preparing the, the installation at the demo site. So hopefully we will be able to, to have the system work and moreover to have uh, as much as possible uh, monitoring of the, of the behavior of the system. So in short is this, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question later. Thank you, Gabriel. Yes, we will have the question section at the end of the the presentation as well. So okay. now we can switch to the next one, which is um, Claudia Fabiani from the University of Perugia. She will present in uh, the project SWS heating. Uh, Claudia is um, a postdoc researcher and uh, now she uh, holds a grant, uh, a research grant in applied physics at the University of Perugia and she's also uh, participating in several uh, European projects at the same university. So please, Claudia, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so in the next few slides, I will talk to you about the SWS heating project, which is a very compelling project we're working on and since uh, June 2018. Uh, and the project aims at uh, developing an innovative seasonal thermal energy storage unit, making use of novel sorbent storage material uh, which is in, introduced in a compact and multimodular sorption unit and of course we also develop all the advanced components and smart control systems that we need to operate this kind of equipment the uh, the aim of course is to being able to store solar heat when it is more largely available so in summer of course and then shift it used uh, in a seasonal approach in the winter period. And by doing so, what we want to do is to cover uh, a large fraction of the uh, energy need for space heating and domestic hot water demand of a single family building, which was selected to be, uh, as reference building, a net zero energy building um, from uh, the European, uh, let's say, uh, countries. Uh, the boundary conditions consider three different climates, let's say, so uh, the boundaries of northern, central and uh, southern Europe. And uh, basically we, we tried uh, to define this system that, as I said, is a multimodular system that makes use of solar collectors, the absorber desorber for the SWS material, and then as a vacuum combi storage and a thermal buffer, and of course a backup heater, but we will see this maybe in more details later. The core objective of this project, as you can understand, is the development of this new sorbent material from the SWS family that needs to operate at a relatively uh, low temperature range uh, among 70 and 95 Celsius degrees, and this is because we want this system to be effective also, as I said, in Northern Europe countries. And of course, another compelling objective is the introduction of this material in a multimodular configuration that needs to be compact, corrosion resistant, durable, uh, easy to install and maintain, and also have a relatively low cost to be applied effectively in both existing and new buildings. Uh, for single family houses buildings. As you see here in the sketch, the system will work in different ways in summer and winter, of course. In summer, it will mostly store heat through the desorbing, so the charging of the SWS, uh, while in winter, it will uh, release this heat that was previously stored and use it, as I said, for space heating, reaching up to 45 Celsius degrees, 
and also uh, domestic hot water uh, energy needs, so around 60 uh, degrees. The ambitions of the project, as you may see, uh, are of course the uh, being able to introduce it in both uh, existing and new uh, refurbished um, single-family houses. We want to cover at least 60% of the solar fraction, so the energy need associated to space heating and uh, domestic hot water, not only in Southern Europe, but also in Northern Europe. So as I said, we need to operate at relatively lower temperatures for the charging. And we want to do this by also reducing the cost of these systems compared to other solar units that are competitors on the market. Uh, the aim is to reach uh, TRL 5 for this uh, system, so define a prototype and also validate uh, the prototype itself. For doing so, we defined a sort of Matryoshka approach level of analysis. So uh, we started, we defined four uh, concentric level of analysis. The larger one, so the outer, is the level one, which is the system. And then we go uh, thinner through uh, the, all the subsystem and components and reach the material level, so the smaller level. And in each of these level of analysis, we define specific key performance indicators that allows us to uh, validate our prototype and to verify if we actually manage to reach our objectives. Specifically, we defined seven key performance indicators for the technical, social, economic, and environmental uh, investigation and validation of the system. As you see here, they are referred to the specific level of analysis, and they are associated to, of course, solar fraction, which is one of the primary goals, primary energy consumption, but also STES, power density and efficiency for the technical point of view. Uh, we also have some parameters for the environmental analysis, so CO2 and GHG emissions, also for cost, which is, is uh, of course, very important for real application of this prototype. We also selected three key performance indicators to validate and, um, let's say, assess the user satisfaction and the dissemination and, and exploitations of this project, which, as the other colleagues said before, is a crucial aspects for all innovative applications in both buildings and industrial applications. Uh, this is more or less um, the overview of all the partners that participate with us in this project. It's 16 partners among universities, researchers, and also industry and technology development. So they are doing a great job up until now. Um, we hope this will be the same in the next months, let's say. And here I just have a few topics that maybe we can discuss later uh, that emerge as important topics during this project. So the need to properly combine different technologies that do exist at the moment, but that need to be controlled properly and integrated in a multi-domain approach. Uh, the need to define a comprehensive assessment approach that takes into account both environmental, technical, but also cost and uh, um, user acceptance um, theme and topics. And also, as uh, for last say, but not least, probably uh, we need, we have a necessity to define a sort of list of key, of key performance indicators that are becoming, becoming ever more important in, in Europe, let's say also in the H2020 program, to being able to assess and compare different systems altogether and, and define actually uh, a sort of common way to validate our systems and define if they are can be properly integrated in existing buildings. You also have here the link for our project, so keep posted about the SWS. We hope uh, we will have great results in the next months. Thank you, Claudia. I think we are a little bit in delay. So thank you for the presentation. And uh, I think we can move ahead with the next one, which will be the project scores uh, that will be presented by Zuzana Tatakova, which is project management at uh, project manager at Phoenix TNT, an engineering consulting company with uh, 11 years of experience in new funded projects mainly focus on dissemination, business modeling, and so on. So, of course, she's not uh, exactly a technical person, but she 
we kindly present the project and we try to you know, also share the, their point of view about the, the topic. Thank you. Thank you for, very much for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Susanna Tatyakova, and I would like to shortly introduce the SCORES project. So SCORES project combines and optimizes the multi-energy generation, storage and consumption of local renewable energy and grid supply through the development of compact hybrid storage technologies integrated using a smart building energy management system. Uh, the project works on optimization of self-consumption in residential buildings, bringing new sources of flexibility to the grid and enabling reliable operation with the positive business case in Europe's large building stock. The project is based on cooperation of 12 partners representing both industry and uh, research. And these partners are working together for four years to achieve the common goals. The SCORES concept is based on a hybrid system combining effectively and efficiently solutions that harvest electricity and heat from the sun, store electricity, convert electricity into heat, store the heat and manage the energy flows in the building. Therefore, increasing the generation and self-consumption of the local renewable energy. Uh, the main objective of the SCORES project is to demonstrate uh, the integration, optimization and operation of the building's energy system and to include new compact hybrid storage technologies, which optimize supply, uh, storage and demand of electricity and heat in residential buildings. This also increase the self-consumption and uh, try to uh, improve the use of local renewable energy in the residential buildings at the lowest cost. The purpose of the SCORES project is to enrich the competitive industry, to improve the grid stability, to support energy independency, contribute to CO2 reduction, promote job creation and increase the use of renewables. In order to overcome the main technical and non-technical barriers of the hybrid systems, course set the following objectives. To develop a technology of second life uh, lithium ion batteries. To use the electric driven heating with interday phase change material heat storage. Optimize a high performance water to water heat pump supplied by hybrid photovoltaic and solar collectors improve and optimize compact loss-free heat storage technology, develop and integrate building energy management system, assess the economic potential of said hybrid system, and test the efficiency of air-to-air -air heat pump. As you can see, there are a lot of uh, goals, but uh, the work is uh, on. The demonstration of the integrated hybrid energy system takes place in two real buildings representative of different climate and energy system configurations for three cases. So we have Northern Europe, Austria, uh, with and without heat grid, and uh, in Southern Europe, France, without a heat grid. Uh, the demonstration site of the SCORES technologies is located in the south of France where a new state-of-the-art building has been constructed, comprising of 115 small apartments and collective areas for retired people. And the other demonstration, uh, which is located in Austria, is an already existing residential building block, uh, which is connected to both the electricity network and the local heating. One of the technologies, the Redox heat technology, is developed by TNO. The redox heat battery uses the reduction and oxidation reactions to store heat. It can be easily implemented in a single, fam single family house, an apartment building or a neighborhood and scaled to the appropriate size. The project, as many other pro projects, is affected by the current difficult situation, but we are excited to present the results of the project within the next year with a, an extension and you can find more technical details on the website. Uh, we are also already working on proposals for follow-up project. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope I kept the time um, and I'm yes, ready to answer. Thank you. Good. So we can move to the next and last uh, presentation from the 
section of the workshop, which is from the create project. Samuel Knabel from IA Intech is uh, presenting it. He is project manager and system engineer at uh, IA Intech since 2012. And uh, the main working field is the uh, development and integration of thermal energy storage systems. So, Samuel, the floor is yours. Please uh, unmute. Okay, now, hello, also from my side. Now you should hear me. Um, just wondering, can you see me or can you see the presentation? You can both. see both and the presentation, so okay. Okay, the presentation, so that's okay. So um, um, yeah, thank you for the introduction. Today I would like to give you a short overview about uh, the project CREATE. Um, it's an, okay. Uh, it's a European uh, Horizon 2020 project. Uh, and the main aim, the overall aim of the, the project CREATE is to tackle the thermal energy storage ch challenge by building and developing and compact uh, thermochemical heat storage. Overall, um, the project um, is finished. So the project started in October uh, uh, 2015 uh, and it ended with an um, extension um, this, this, this summer in August 2020. So the project is, is over. Uh, overall, we had 12 partners in the research project, um, five pro, uh, partners from the research uh, part, and we had seven industry um, partners. Uh, and those seven industry partners more or less um, tackle the whole uh, value change of, 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 of the development and also of the production and future um, um, distribution and, and, and the selling of, of such a thermal chemical storage system. Uh, the, oh, sorry, uh, the project objectives, um, as I said, it was to develop and demonstrate a heat battery system based on uh, thermochemical um, materials. Um, the objectives in particular are that it's economically affordable. So it, on the other side, it should be cheap and not too expensive, but it should reduce the energy consumption of about 15% and the payback time uh, less than 10 years. It should be compact, so it should uh, use the space available uh, as good as possible, and uh, it should have had an, it should have a high storage density as well. And since it's planned, or since it, it the, the boundary condition was to develop a seasonal storage, it's very important that the storage system itself uh, does not have have uh, heat losses during the storage phase. Um, to the create concept itself, so here you can see a, a short scheme or a, a smaller scheme of, of the system itself. So we have the um, long-term seasonal storage uh, system in, in the cellar or in the basement of a house uh, containing the thermochemical storage material. Um, and this uh, storage is charged in summer, mainly via the solar collectors. So surplus heat in summer is used to charge the, the seasonal storage collector over the um, buffer storage. And in winter, autumn, when heat is needed for domestic hot water and space heating, um, the uh, thermochemical he uh, heat storage is used to provide heat for those applications. Um, additionally, to the long-term um, storage, there is also a heat pump integrated into the system uh, in case um, there is that the cap capacity is used um, and um, heat is needed. Um, the technical developments in um, CREATE uh, were different paths. The one path was the development of the storage material itself. Uh, and for that, um, a database of around 600 different salt head rays were analyzed uh, in terms of costs, in terms of storage density, in terms of um, dehydration and hydration temperature. And at the end, um, more, the most promising um, material was, um, was selected for the project, um, and this was potassium carbonate. Um, for potassium carbonate, further tests were, were done and also to include different composites with uh, potassium carbonate to at the end get the best fitting material with the highest storage density um, for the system itself. Uh, besides the material development, also development on the component and system um, side was done. So as you can see here on the right corner, um, storage module, a modular prismatic storage module was developed. Um, um, we used the prismatic storage model or we developed the prismatic storage model to use the, the, the space available in the basement as good as possible. So like normally cylindrical storages in uh, 
at, at 10 millibars are used. Uh, but just by using a prismatic storage vessel, the storage density was increased by about 20%. Um, the storage models itself uh, had a size of around 400 liters per model. We had then power output of around two kilowatts, a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on the temperature range it was working in, and the energy density on storage model level of around 115 kilowatt hours per cubic meters uh, compared to water when you say, okay, water has around 50 kilowatt hours per cubic meters. Um, this um, storage models were um, further developed during the, the, the project uh, duration itself. Uh, different tests in the laboratory were, uh, were done, but also hardware in the loop experiments in, in our lab in Gleisdorf. Um, one big part um, and very important part of the CREATE project itself was the implementation of this uh, storage system in a real case or in a real house, in a real demonstrator. Uh, and this was done, so the system was installed in, in Warsaw in an orphanage. You can see here the house, the solar collectors on the roof, which is charging the, the three models, which you can see in here. Um, we placed the, the storage system itself in a container just because like the house itself, the demo house, um, had just really small uh, small boiler room, so it was not possible to include it. Um, but other than that, this was completely di uh, connected to the um, to the heating grid of the house itself. Um, and the demo period we started in August 2019, uh, close to a year. So in June 2020, it was finished. Um, and uh, as a summary, it was working more or less like a charm. So we were really satisfied with this. Um, and as I said, the project was over um, in. Just a, just a couple of months ago. Um, overall, uh, for my opinion itself, it was like a, a, a proof of a nice proof of concept, a proof of our prototypes we have built. Um, and if you have any further information to the contact uh, to the project, you can contact me. Um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, indeed, Samuela. Um... We, we do have a question, so which was uh, launched during Claudia presentation, but I think it uh, it will apply to all of the projects which were presented are uh, related to storage. So the question is, what is the real energy density compared to water, considering all the volume used for the complete storage system? I mean, not only the material, but the complete units. Um, okay, um, so in our case, we are still under the prototyping phase, so we are still uh, optimizing and defining the system, the volume of the system. So we don't really have the per correct value now, we are still under development, let's say. The aim is, of course, to reach at least 60% of the total solar fraction, so we need to have high gel per meter cube for sure. Uh, it, it really depends on, on how all the system is uh, actually implemented because the difficult part, as I said before, is not only to develop the sorbent material, but also to develop the compact system and to uh, define the proper way to connect all these components together. I think this applies mostly to all the the systems that share different kinds of storages together. Yeah. Thank you, Claudia. Gabriel, Samuel, do you want to add uh, anything yeah. there? Uh, I could add that. So um, um, it's always important on, on what you're looking for. So it's like the question was particularly the all over system. But in our case, the all over system also includes the buffer storage. Um, which is the main part where you transfer the heat from the models to the buffer storage and vice versa. But if you're just taking into account the models, so which are more or less the models with containing the material um, and which containing some smaller insulation is around 115 kilowatt hours per cubic meters. Uh, and like you can compare it to water, it, which is around plus minus, but it's around 50 kilowatt hours per cubic meter. So this is the range where we ended up in, in the project and what we I showed in the lab, but also in, in on the demo side. Yeah, thanks, Samuel. And we have a question from the audience. Uh, so again, specific for you for the Create project. So the Create system would still need a ground heat source. Is that correct? 
uh, yes, the, the create system uh, needs a ground heat source in our case, um, but it was the typically designed, so the system design at the beginning was, okay, we want to include a, a heat pump, so um, this was more, uh, and containing the heat pump, uh, the ground source is also used for the heat pump itself. But in our case, we did designed itself that we used a, a ground source for winter uh, for the dehydration case. Thank you very much, Samir. Um... Gabriel from iBuild, I don't know if you wanted to add a few words as well. Well, regarding the en energy density yeah. of the, okay, yeah, since in iBuild we are developing two different systems which have similar parts, but they are also quite different because in one there we, we have sorption and in the other one we don't have it. So yeah, I, I don't have now the numbers, but yeah, I, I think uh, as Claudia said, we, we are still finishing no, the, to define the, the systems. And, but I think we, we will, actually this is one of the KPIs we will use in the project. The, one of them is the energy density. So we will, as soon as we will have all these numbers, yeah, we will deliver them to to the uh, stakeholders. <laughs> Thank you very much, Gabriel. Uh, and we do have an extra question, and it's again for you, Samuel, for Create. Um, the question is, is the borehole length higher in the Create concept compared to what you would need in a conventional ground source heat pump? Uh, in our case, not, no. Because like the... Um, um, the, the heat pump has a higher peak power, so a higher extraction power from the ground source. So it was more or less. Um, so that the answer is no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, clear. Thank you very much. And uh, and and finally, yeah, we we've got another question, but which is a general one uh, and quite similar to the the previous panel. Huh? It's basically what what is the main barrier or barriers that you see uh, for the wide deployment of of those uh, innovative storage solutions. So yeah, so, I, I could start. You want to start, Claudia? <laughs> it's okay. You can go ahead. Okay. So um, I think there, from my point of view, there may be like two three points. The one one key point I think is the awareness that the thermal storage systems or thermal storage will will play a key role in the energy transition, and this is just to do the fact that like more than fifty percent of the overall energy consumption is is used for heat production, not only for power production, and since the heat production is a very like compared to the power production is and 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 there are a lot of fossil fossil um, fossils are used for that, so I think it will be a, a play a key role in the in the energy transition. And the second part is that um, what we see right now at this point of time is that we showed, we have a prototype, we have a working prototype that it's possible to build such systems, but then the transformation from this prototype, from this research um, point to like a product in which is, is being sold, there's still a gap in between. And this is like an, 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 an and a gap which is hard to, to overcome, I have the feeling at this point of time. Yeah, I, I concur. Actually, I feel there is lots of uh, limitations that we need to face uh, before being actually able to install these kind of systems widely, at least in the building sector. We have limitations from a political point of view, from an economic point of view, and also from a social point of view. Politically speaking, we have a huge lobby for existing, you know, uh, systems. Uh, like say we have in Italy, for example, we have huge um, fundings for PV development, PV installations, simple PVs. Uh, from the economic point of view, there is of course the cost barrier because these systems are prototypes, so inevitably you have higher costs at the beginning when you need to you know, produce it at a larger scale and um, diffuse your new equipments, your new technology. 
and from a social point of view you have still the reluctance from the large public to trust a new uh, a new technology which is not being used before so we have lots of things that we should consider and where we should put some effort let's say to have a widespread of these technologies yeah i i agree i totally agree with claudia uh, that these these are the main barriers uh, also okay i think uh, your project sws heating is also a uh, low uh, trl no? uh, yeah from to three five. four to five the same as high build so first of all i i think we should first demonstrate no, uh, that this technology can work so let's validate it in in a demo and then if everything goes fine then maybe we can give uh, even a better answer but basically what what claudia said i totally agree yeah thank you very much to all of you um I think we, we have time for one extra question. That's for you again, Samuel. Um, question from Mohamed Fadel uh, from the audience. He's asking what about the long-term system degradation of the TEM system? And so far, how many cycles the system has been run? Um, so the degradation uh, the degradation was tested in on the material level itself, so more than more, way more than 100 cycles were tested on a smaller scale and we didn't see any degradation in the material itself uh, and with the system which was installed in Poland and which was tested in in in, um, in Gleisdorf before that in the laboratory we in total run around I would say 30 cycles so 30 dehydration and hydration cycles and we didn't see any degradation so um, this was this was also one key um, uh, one key factor in making the decision of the material we 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 then used so the potassium carbonate so we didn't see any and, and if it's used as a seasonal storage we don't expect that there will be material degradation itself and the system itself um, also was working really nice so it was it, we didn't see that at least in in this project all right perfect thank you very much to all of you uh, I think with that, we'll close this, uh, this panel on the storage solutions, and I will give you back the floor, Andrea. Next. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think that there were uh, some good uh, questions. I uh, for uh, this, uh, Andrea, if you uh, can get closer to your microphone, because really yeah, the audio yeah. is very yeah. difficult. <laughs> Better? Yeah, better. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think it was really interesting uh, discussion now. Uh, I just want to point out because I'm involved in some of these projects. So, um, especially when you try to make the um, comparison between uh, energy storage with uh, sensible water, you need always to take into account that most of the technologies that were presented now are meant for seasonal storage. So if you want to make uh, a comparison against water, you need to also consider that water in seasonal operation needs a very uh, huge insulation or underground uh, installation, which means uh, high cost. And in any case, you cannot avoid uh, heat losses during seasonal operation. So at the end, the comparison is not um, so fair. But yeah, uh, of course, it is a, a crucial topic to optimize the system as a uh, both Claudia and Samuel were uh, mentioning you need to really optimize the system to achieve uh, a good energy storage also at system level. So um, I think now we can have a break for 10 minutes, more or less. Uh, so we'll be back around uh, uh, half past uh, 3 p.m. and then we can start with the next uh, workshop. Thank you, Andrea. But pay you pay pay. Like five minutes.
So, I hope you enjoyed your your video. So we are now moving on with the next uh, section of the workshop, which is about uh, innovative solution for renewable heating and cooling deployment in buildings. So basically, in this section, we we'll have four um, ongoing projects that are, let's say, low TRL projects uh, trying to develop new concepts for renewable heating and cooling solution in buildings. The first one uh, is uh, uh, the Nova Microsolar project, uh, which will be presented by the coordinator, Hamid uh, Makamov, from the, which is a professor of mechanical engineering at, at uh, Northumbria University in Newcastle. His background is uh, in thermal engineering and uh, is uh, actively working on uh, thermomechanical energy conversion. So please uh, come in, the floor is yours. So should I uh, open my presentation here on my screen? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> thank you, Regis. And uh, this is a presentation about the Novo Microsolar project, uh, which uh, we have developed, uh, built, and uh, uh, testing. Um, for uh, solar micro CHP applications in buildings. Uh, I'm making this presentation on behalf of our consortium, which is made of uh, three universities and um, six SMEs in the UK, France, Italy, and Spain. So a uh, major goal of our um, project is to generate two kilowatts of electricity and 18 kilowatts of the solar uh, thermal power using this uh, micro solar CHP. Um, <clears throat> so a uh, picture on the left uh, shows you main um, conceptual uh, schematic of our plant, which uh, consists of the solar field, which is uh, Fresnel mirrors. Thermal energy generated is uh, used to run a small micro uh, organic Rankine cycle turbine unit and also to charge this, which is uh, based on the uh, modified solar salt with a PCM, and the energy is supplied um, at the temperature levels between 250 and 280 centigrade. And building is connected to, oh, sorry, this plant is connected to the building. Um, small town, Almatret in Catalonia, they made available for us um, uh, this uh, demo site, which is basically the same as for a few built uh, project. And uh, they are converting uh, old school into the hostel. Several seven rooms. It can accommodate 32 people, and uh, it also has a common uh, kitchen and uh, uh, bathroom areas. So uh, here you can see uh, on former playground we are installing our solar field, uh, which is connected to the engine room. And uh, in the in the engine room, uh, you can see with the green boxes. This is a thermal storage system. And uh, on the right, you can see um, elements uh, such as the ORC and uh, other components of the BOP plant. So talking about uh, major components, uh, first of all, it is a solar field. We run very extensive uh, simulations uh, to optimize the curvature of uh, mirrors in each row in order to uh, obtain as much possible of uh, thermal energy. And uh, this slide shows you appearance of um, mirrors installed uh, on the site of linear receivers uh, in accordance with our drawings. Uh, it was tested, uh, tested several times. So it generally produces um, thermal power. It requires temperature levels. Uh, but uh, still, I think we need to do some small uh, changes uh, uh, to get to that level we want. Uh, solar field was um, tested separately for heating and uh, it um, hit the target easily. And also this um, uh, organic Rankine cycle turbine. So picture on the left shows the appearance. The first version of the uh, turbine uh, diagram on the right shows the second version where we changed the uh, heat exchanges and uh, made uh, some small tweaks into the design of ORC. And then uh, in the center, you can see expand itself. It is very small, basically the size of the 
East. It was run uh, in laboratories and uh, field tests, and uh, now we are doing maybe final adjustments uh, to get to that uh, level of electrical uh, power output uh, they want. PCM storage system, uh, picture here, you can see it is made of the six uh, boxes, six separate modules. Inside of these modules, uh, we have a heat pipes, the directional heat pipes which are used uh, to uh, take uh, heat from the solar field into the PCM and then return heat uh, to the oil going to the ORC. So using heat pipes uh, basically makes charging and discharging process very fast. Uh, solar uh, test systems were tested <coughs> at each module and uh, basically its performance is adequate to our um, expectations and finally uh, our plant uh, can be uh, run remotely using this um, central control unit uh, but we also have a very nice um, apparatus graphical interface uh, which we can use to intervene and uh, to change parameters of the operation uh, to understand more uh, fully uh, behavior of the plant um, currently we are waiting for better times uh, to complete the um, uh, refinement of the whole system and uh, obtain full experimental data for the performance of the plant. Uh, we have uh, for that um, until the uh, 1st of the, uh, June 2021. I think uh, with the end of my presentation, uh, if you need uh, further uh, details, uh, please uh, get in touch using my email address at the front. And uh, that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Camille, for your nice presentation. So we can move to the next uh, project, which will uh, be presented by Professor Salidis Carellas, uh, the Sol BioRev uh, project. <laughs> professor Carellas is a professor at the School of Mechanical Engineer at the National Technical University of Athens and visiting professor in two uh, German uh, uh, universities, and he specializes in several fields of uh, energy efficiency, storage, and conversion. So please list the floor is yours. So Thierryos, you should please unmute yourself, because we can't hear you. Yes, 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 of course. Uh, just Thank let you. me show my screen. Uh, okay. I think I'm sharing my screen now, no? Change presenter. Not yet. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry for the delay. Hmm? Cannot find my name here. Uh, uh, You did not see my screen, sorry. Andrea, perhaps we can switch the order of the presentations otherwise. Can we move to the next one because I have, I have a problem with it. Uh, yes, yeah, so Andrea, can you can you present, uh, can you show my presentation because I have a deny from... Very sorry for that. Yes, we'll, we'll, we'll have Danny we'll present. Danny present. And, and, Danny and, and, and then we'll be okay. serious. Okay. Serious. Okay. Okay. Let, let's uh, do the uh, Daniel presenting a free backup okay. HP project, and then we'll switch back to Sorbira. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, uh, as already mentioned, the, this next presentation by Danny Garbonel, from, which is a mechanical engineer, team leader of thermal system and modeling group as SPF Institute for Solar Technology, uh, and is going to present the project free HP. Please, Danny. Yeah, so, do you hear me? And do you see the presentation? Yes. Good. So, um, as I was presented, I'm working at SPF. Um, just uh, mentioning here that uh, we are have kind of a new organization called OST, which is a merged university out of three, Rappersville, where we, were, uh, where we are located and it was our affiliation before. 
and, and also St. Gallen and Books. So most of you will know us from being uh, linked to Rappersville, but now this is our new affiliation. So today I'm, I'm going to present 3HP, which is a project that stands for three generation systems based on heat pumps with natural refrigerants and multiple renewable sources. And our main goal in the project it's to develop systems that are called three generations, so they can develop, they can provide heating, cooling, and electricity. And we are targeting multifamily residential buildings. And we are doing this using uh, electrically driven natural refrigerant heat pumps that are covered with photovoltaics. And our main target is to achieve 80% uh, renewal on-site share with a net zero energy concept. So 20% of the electricity is exchanged with the grid because we are lacking uh, seasonal storage. And we are aiming to reduce installation costs by 10 to 15 percent compared to current heat pump technologies that have a similar efficiency. Um, as I said, we are targeting multifamily residential buildings and we are doing this for new buildings with a high share of domestic water compared to uh, heating and cooling and also for refurbished buildings with, which have a higher share for space heating and cooling compared to domestic water. In order to supply the demands to these systems, we are using two kinds of um, uh, systems. One is what is called a dual sourcing system, which is a heat pump based system that is using uh, ground and air as sources for the heat pump. And the cost reduction here, uh, it's aiming at 15% on the system uh, because we can reduce the borehole length by 50%. And this is a system that is targeting heating and cooling uh, with a reversible heat pump. The second system is what we call a solar ice slurry system, which is basically a heat pump system that it's uh, using solar collectors as a thermal source for the evaporator with an ice slurry as an intermediate storage medium. And here our cost reduction is based on the elimination of the heat exchanges in the ice storage using the ice storage te uh, slurry technology. And this is a system uh, targeting mainly heating demands in Central Europe, uh, where cooling is an, an add-on feature. These systems will be um, tested in the laboratory to reach a TRL5 uh, with the hardware in the loop uh, concept. So uh, the main developments will be physically installed in the lab and the remaining things will be emulated and simulated. In order to develop this ice lorry concept, what we need are uh, isophobic coatings. So basically there is a development on, on this field where we try to delay uh, ice nucleation and this uh, coating should stand uh, immersed application uh, with water flows. Then these coatings are applied in a heat exchanger. This is an example of an alpha level uh, flight plate heat exchanger in what we call a supercooler, which is basically a heat exchanger that is always free of ice, but it has water at minus two, minus three degrees in liquid state. Another development is what is called a tripartite gas cooler, which is a compact a gas cooler uh, used in CO2 heat pumps, uh, where it, uh, the goal is to maximize the temperature glide in the CO2 gas cooler. And by these developments, uh, we are able to increase the COP of the heat pump by 20% when we are operating in simultaneous uh, domestic water and space heating. And the last heat exchanger development is what is called a dual sourcing. So this is a heat exchanger used as an evaporator and as a condenser that can use uh, both sources, ground and air, as sources and as sinks. And the main innovation is that the, this development is uh, allowing to have a direct exchange between the refrigerant and the heat transfer fluids. And this allows us to increase, uh, increase the COP of the heat pump by 10% when the both uh, sources or sinks are operated simultaneously. Then all these heat exchanges are implemented, are being implemented uh, in, this, uh, in three heat pumps. One is a propane ice with, with the supercooler. One is a propane dual with this dual sourcing heat exchanger. And the last one is a CO2 ice using a supercooler and this tripartite gas cooler. Some of them are being tested now and others will be tested in the next month. And on top of this, we have an advanced energy management system that will uh, control the complete system, including, of course, heating, cooling and electricity. And it also will manage the sensible, the latent heat and cold and electrical storage. It has on top self-detecting errors and heat pump level, and it's using model predictive control to diminish or to decrease the, the energy cost by 15%. Last but not least, we have uh, uh, quite some work on technology acceptance. Uh, the goal is to understand and improve the acceptance of the stakeholders on, on these kind of technologies. We also try to analyze and identify the interests uh, and needs of, of key stakeholders like end users, installers, and so on. 
And we are using this with qualitative interviews and, and soon we will start with, with workshops. Some maybe will be online now due to COVID, but others we hope to be to help them physically. And as a result, we, we will have some guidelines and recommendations uh, for the stakeholders' acceptance. So thanks for your attention. This is a picture of our group. And here you can see the logos of the involved partners. Thank you, Daniel, for your nice presentation. So now we can yeah, switch back to this presentation. I will share, share my screen now. Um, just a comment very fast. Um, I will have to leave sharp five minutes to four, so it might be that I'm not able to answer questions uh, depending on timings. If so, there is a colleague, Michaela, could, that could try to do this, and if not, then please send me an email. I will be glad to answer. Okay, thank you. We'll try to keep at least five minutes before four o'clock to, to have also your feedbacks. So can you see my screen now? Yes, uh, I think uh, that I corrected it, but uh, let's let's do it your, uh, with your presentation. Or if you make me a presenter, then I think it will be okay because there was a, a firewall. But okay, let's start like this. And you make sorry for this. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Yeah, I'm very sorry for this uh, for the inconvenience. Um, so my name is Atiris Karelas. I am uh, from the National Technical University of Athens, and I will present you the Sol Bio Rev uh, project. I would like to congratulate the organizers for this uh, excellent uh, afternoon. We are all uh, in, and uh, I'm very happy to be in the same panel uh, with people like Andrea. Uh, um, Gabriel, Claudia, etc., Daniel, etc. So, uh, SolBioRev is a project uh, which is uh, one and a half, almost year old. Uh, it is financed by Horizon 2020, and uh, um, so uh, Andrea, please. Uh, and uh, uh, it is uh, there. There is a, uh, the National Technical University of Athens is coordinating this uh, project. And uh, we have uh, uh, people from all around Europe uh, uh, and uh, eight SMEs and seven research partners. So if we go to the concept, uh, what we would, uh, what, what is the main idea of uh, the concept is that we have a reversible heat pump when that is the main base of this configuration. In this project, we have a, a heat pump that is also working in a, in a, let's say, reversible way, uh, doing uh, uh, working also as, or as an organic granting cycle. So our main uh, idea is to cover uh, the, the three needs of a building, which is uh, hot water, uh, space cooling, and electricity. So uh, what we are doing is that we are trying to uh, to optimize the components of the system. So we see that we have uh, solar uh, thermal uh, panels, we have uh, so solar thermal collectors, we have uh, um, uh, Texas or so thermoelectric generators, and we also have this uh, heat pump reverse blower system. And for the peak, uh, we have uh, a biomass boiler, as it can be seen in this uh, picture. Uh, if we go on, we can uh, uh, we can see uh, the main uh, concept. So in summer mode and in winter mode. In summer mode, we have uh, the needs uh, for cooling. So there is an adsorption chiller uh, which is uh, uh, providing space cooling to the system together uh, with a, a reversible heat pump RC working as a heat pump. So this way we can have. Uh, uh, the possibility to use the solar thermal energy, provide heat and to have a very good COP in the reversible heat pump RC. And on, in winter mode, we are actually uh, having the chiller out of operation and uh, the, re the reversible heat pump RC is working in a way to provide either uh, space uh, heating or electricity together with the thermoelectric generators and the uh, needed heat for the when we have peak uh, demands is covered by a biomass boiler. If we go to the uh, 
in the next slide, you can see the um, uh, we can see the main uh, concept. Uh, if you go on, please, Andrea. Sorry for that. The main Innova goes all that. together with uh, the, um, the vacuum tubes of a solar collector. So we are trying to integrate, validate uh, at the intended environment and design adopted to building specification stakeholders feedback. So what we are going to do in the end of uh, the project, what is our idea, is to have two demos, which is in the next, which are in the next slide. One in uh, a Central Europe environment, uh, in Nuremberg, in Germany, and one in Athens, as you can see here at the, the University of uh, Athens. So there will be two uh, pilots uh, uh, demonstrated in these uh, two uh, buildings. And uh, finally, what we what we are uh, checking, if you change the slide, please, uh, the overall ambitions, we need to develop a compact system, highly flexible, but also cost effective. So in order to, uh, to, to increase the share of renewables in Europe of above 85% and to validate this whole system with innovative, relatively low DRL, to validate it for two different climatic conditions. So uh, in the next slide, it can be seen that uh, we are starting from uh, a relatively, uh, please change the slide. Uh, we are we are trying. Uh, we are starting for a for a TRL three. If we have this heat pump based configuration, we want to end up to a, a TRL five, which is which are the pilots that are going to be uh, to be demonstrated. And uh, going on with this uh, uh, with the next slide, are uh, when I'm uh, finishing with my presentation, we can see. Um, with the food for thought is first of all the innovative uh, system integration challenges and the combination of innovative heating and cooling systems to increase the conventional storage system capacity. So uh, we are, as I said before, in the uh, beginning of the project. And when I say the beginning of the project, we have, the, of course, the problem that everybody is facing with the COVID situation. I hope that we will have some uh, results within the next months. You can find us in this uh, internet site. I would like, and we're open to any discussion, any um, any ideas, uh, and thank you very much for your attention. And I apologize for this problem with the PowerPoint today. And thank you, Andrea, for your support. Thank you, Sotiris. Uh, I guess we lost uh, just a part of your presentation because of a poor connection. But I hope uh, everything was clear, but we will have time during the question and answer for any specific question. So we now move to the last presentation for this section of the workshop, which is uh, uh, from Hayes' speaker um, for the rest for build uh, project. Um, he's a senior energy and low carbon transition researcher at JAN Climate and Sustainability in the Netherlands. So, Please, the floor is yours. Please unmute yourself, Asia. We can't hear you. We can see you and your slides. I, I forgot to, to, to touch the last button there. Okay. Uh, thank you for uh, for inviting uh, for inviting us to this session. Uh, I think it's quite encouraging to see all the technological advancements of the, the different uh, research projects that have been presented. I will have a slightly different focus today. Um, I will be presenting uh, some findings on a good practice assessment um, of integrated energy systems that we've done within the framework of the Rest for Build project. Um, in addition to this, we also have technological work that's being done on multi-source heat pumps and PV thermal systems and building management systems and, and uh, linking with uh, borehole thermal energy storage. So that, like a lot of the challenges and the the the, the, the yeah, that that we face uh, were quite uh, recognizable from the previous previous presentations. Um, I will I will focus a bit more on the the social economic and the stakeholder uh, acceptance side uh, based on this uh, uh, within uh, our project. Um, 
um, looking into the to the context of the of the let's say the the energy transition in the built environment, um, of course this this renovation wave is is needed in order to meet the uh, EU level climate uh, and energy uh, targets. Uh, and um, uh, if you ask me, I think we would need a, a renovation tsuna a tsunami instead of a wave, because there is a urgent need to speed up and scale up this this transition. Um, uh, as we all know, these single technologies and single measures are no longer effective. You need more holistic and integrated approaches that need to be standardized. Um, within the Restful Build project, our work as YIN, together with our Polish partner, uh, we are focusing on uh, an assessment of the um, uh, in, uh, of good practices uh, for integrated energy systems in buildings. Um, First of all, what is an integrated energy system? Um, we have seen a lot of them uh, already passing the, the, this, uh, this session. Um, of course, it all has to do with uh, not only the energy installation part, but also with the insulation, so the, the building envelope. Um, so describing an integrated energy system from a technological perspective should be like, it's relatively straightforward uh, from that perspective. Um, you will have IES systems that are building specific, um, or are more collective, for example, if you link it to a district heating system, you have retrofit systems or like new build systems um, for that. And you would have already integrated energy systems being offered to the market that provide, let's say, a one-off transformation of your building to like very high level of uh, near uh, zero emissions or low energy intake. Uh, or you can have a more phased or gradual transformation. So we we dig a bit, we dug a bit into the the theory about uh, like these the technologies and technology systems that are being proposed within the uh, built environment and we came across a lot of a lot of barriers. The literature on this is 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 quite uh, well developed and I think a lot of the barriers that you see listed here should be like familiar to to most of you within um, in the other projects. So we, we clustered them a little bit and uh, we see the, 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 the typical technological uh, barriers with compatibility, safety. If their technology is there, you ha should have like skilled workers to be able to implement them, et cetera. For the financial side, which are becoming increasingly important, is that the high upfront costs uh, are always a main factor and the payback periods are an issue. Uh, the uncertainties and risks it proposes to the, to the normal uh, way of, uh, like to the business as usual way of working, uh, is problematic. The same goes for the for the social dimension, where you see that the decision-making process, especially in multi-stakeholder or multi-family uh, settings, you know, with multi-family buildings or where different end users are are integrating, taking a decision on an investment is quite complex. Uh, awareness is a thing, and the um, uh, also there are some more practical concerns regarding disturbances during the renovation process. So. What we conclude from this literature uh, review is that you need a, an integrated, assess, uh, integrated energy system is not only a robust and compatible and integrated technology package, you also need to have services that minimize the social and financial barriers. Um, for that, you need technological integration, which a lot of the projects are working on. Uh, um, of course, the, the, like a fair bit of financial innovation is needed uh, together with some social innovation. Um, in order to illustrate this and, and take it a bit more pragmatic, we did some um, some assessment of, of good practices. We just uh, scanned around the, the environment within the Netherlands and in Poland to see are there already any integrated energy systems around there, or at least claimed uh, systems that are claiming to be integrated, um, that we could take as, a let's say, a benchmark, a good, a good example. Like one of those examples is illustrated here. It's, um, like a very, it was a very a relatively old building that was not meeting the, the today's comfort standards and it was very energy inefficient. So there was an effort being made, uh, supported by the local governments to, to make this kind of a, a pilot or a demo project to see, like, to, to see if there's a, a good technological solution available to refurbish this, uh, this building. Um, like from a technological perspective, they made some nice choices. Uh, it's they put a lot of emphasis on on insulating, um, and of course the the HVAC system was also implemented. I will refrain a bit from the details, uh, but the, the the truly innovative part, um, like from my perspective, I'm an economist, but actually was more the the financial uh, solution that they identified, um, and not so much the technological uh, solution. 
Um, for this project, there was a dedicated financial instrument developed. Uh, uh, they called it the Acer Service Cost Model, uh, which was a, like a new model that hasn't been uh, uh, available beforehand. Um, it took two years to develop. Uh, the local governments really supported this effort, uh, where it now has become possible to, to link the finance, the investment, uh, to the building, um, to, the, to the homeowner association, and not so much to the individual homeowners. Um, we will have a report coming out shortly based upon this that will describe a bit more on this building-linked finance structure. Um, and the, the truly innovative part is that, that the, the, the upfront investment was no longer um, need, need no longer needed to be done by every individual actor. So this increased, this this really facilitated decision-making process. On the on the social uh, aspect, um, the the technology technology provider really had to learn on how to communicate and interact and engage with the end users, the people who are actually living there. Um, robust planning on refurbishment activities needed to be done, uh, um, like after like the the, the construction period has been done, this aftercare um, communications and, and structures needed to be there. Um, so, and they had like a lot of learning by doing there. And now this organization, which, which supplied this technology, has developed a very dedicated protocol to actually be able to engage better with the end users in these type of buildings. Um, so this was actually a pilot project where like all the three pillars, um, like they had the technology, they had a new financial solution uh, being developed and the social engagement was was uh, was organized. So that all combined made it like a good practice example. Only it's still not yet, um, let's say, um, easy to to scale at this point because the 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 amount of support needed from public entities was was quite substantial. Um, so just to conclude uh, from our analysis, and we will have again we will have a report out on this shortly by the end of this month, so in a few days we'll put it online, um, we, we come up to the conclusion that for a successful implementation and scaling of an integrated energy system, you need and the, not only the technology to be in place, it has to be robust, functional, turnkey, all the components need to work together, uh, also software or IT-wise, they need to be compatible. Um, the, the social innovation and social engagement is needed uh, with the end users in order to avoid frustration, uh, et cetera. All those type of activities uh, like are part of the integrated energy solution. Um, and uh, on, on top of that, it would be of great benefit to also have, to, to know the, the end user's financial um, uh, flexibilities and capacities. Um, so these, these financial services are, are, are now uh, being developed, and uh, within the the report that will be that will be coming out, we also reviewed a number of integrated energy system suppliers that provo provide services on all these three pillars, and with tailored financial solutions. So um, I I hope that especially for for the the lower TRL solutions that uh, that the integrated solutions that are now being developed, that these type of let's say more business concepts with the social inclusion and the financial innovation will be developed. Um, um, yeah, and, and that's my story for now. Very short, very brief. Uh, the reports will be available quite shortly as one of the, um, the deliverables of the Restful Build project. Um, so thank you. Thank you. So, Regis? Yes, thank you very much to all the speakers of, of this uh, session. Perhaps we have time to take one uh, short question. Um, so we, we do have one, and I think it's a generic one for probably all of the speakers uh, from this um, renewable heating and cooling integration session. So the question is, do you think digitalization can increase the attractiveness of your technologies for buildings owners or users? Yeah, Asia, if you want to start, sure. Yeah, we, we reflected on this, and for sure it will help. Uh, but uh, in the report we, 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 uh, that, that we will publish, we, we, we briefly discussed the, the use, use of the more digitalization, you know, the monitoring systems, etc., um, the IT systems, 
uh, within the framework of energy performance contracting. Um, like together with the technology concept that you provide, the IT is needed to ensure that if you have performance contracts being offered for your system on energy performance, then you would need to have very robust IT and, and monitoring systems in place uh, in order to avoid any, let's say, conflicts or issues there. So I think it will be a key component of your technological uh, solution. Thank you very much, Asian. Camille Soterios, Neila, if you want perhaps to add a few words from your perspective. Yes, I think apparently this digitalization uh, could um, reduce the system complexity, but in the end we have to analyze when it's really needed and look for different cultures and situations because it not might... Uh, First, you need to refurbish the building and then put an innovative system. So digitalization might not work in different situations. So it might be useful in a future step in some countries, but in other countries there are other things which are more relevant, not digitalization. So we have to take it step by step. And every system has a, an, an, a, a system control. So we have to distinguish what means system control, advanced energy management control and digitalization to which extent we go for digitalization well yes uh, if we assume that uh, there is an overlap between digitalization and uh, control smart control then uh, it's very essential for all systems to have a uh, smart control or digitization especially on the research and development uh, stage and uh, I think it is um, generally very feasible thing to do uh, to implement deep uh, digitalization uh, in modern energy systems. Um, from my point of view, um, I agree with what was said up to now. I also liked uh, the answer of Michaela very much. We need to be a little bit careful with the digitalization. We need uh, to bring the digitalization in the needs of the prosumers or of the of the people living in the building, and not vice versa. So it needs to be case specific, so to say, uh, in terms of uh, uh, how deep the digitalization goes as a new concept to the people. The fact that we need to go to a more digitalized uh, um, uh, aspect of energy, this is clear and. Uh, especially when we're talking about renewable energy conversion, energy efficiency, and renewables question. Discuss is how deep to go in and how smart our systems depending on the case. I'm afraid we have a issue with your connection but i think we got most of your answer so thanks very much for that we do have another question it's also a generic one do you see some innovative um, renewable leading and cooling technologies which would be more suitable for single family houses or and some others more for you know multi-family buildings within your research um I don't know. Uh, if we're talking about, uh, you know, microsolar, uh, cost implications are such that uh, maybe it is more suited for multi-block housing, multi-flat housing, in order to share cost and uh, to bring it, you know, to more or less uh, feasible level of application. Thank you. Also for 3HP, we are targeting multifamily residential buildings, and um, I think this is the range where it's efficient from the cost point of view and also efficiency okay yeah in the uh, yeah in the in the rest for build project we we are running different uh, uh, case studies to really explore how these, uh, these integrated solutions could be adopted and what we see there is that the the buildings generally have similar characteristics so from a technological perspective i don't see like real big like there are challenges, but there are no, it's a, no, no insurmountable barriers there for applying um, different types of integrated technologies. But 
it might, from my perspective, it really depends on the characteristics of the end users. For example, we, we are assessing the users of integrated energy systems in a healthcare environment. But the way they finance, engage with the users of those buildings is completely different than you would have in more public real estate, like gym halls or whatever. The, the way that it's financed and structured, those types of things is completely different. So your the technology concept could be, let's say, one size fits all, more or less, while the financial solutions and social engagement are completely different. And there, there's no um, like real harmonization there. And I, I think it's really important for designing your technological business model and really know more about the, the end users. Yes, I, I now changed the now I have better signal. So uh, I agree. So all the three uh, that spoke before me mentioned the, the words cost and financing. So I think that this is also the main uh, parameter in order to see if single family houses or multifamily houses are uh, important for these uh, technologies. So it is again case specific. Thank you very much you. to all of you. Yeah. Uh, Regis, if you've got one minute, I would like to uh, answer uh, quickly two particular Please. questions. Yes. Somebody was asking why we're using 208 uh, centigrade thermal storage for producing warm water. Of course, the main purpose of this uh, high temperature thermal storage is to expand operational hours of the ORC plant, not to produce water, but to expand operational for, uh, for four hours when sun is not available. And as they were asking about PCM, it is solar salt. You can easily find information on websites, um, solar salt, it is two uh, component uh, substance uh, close to the aesthetical point. We modified uh, in order to increase its uh, conductivity by factor of uh, about um, 18 uh, in our project. But uh, a quick uh, answer. Thank you. Thank you very much for these uh, clarifications, Kevin. All right, thanks again to all of you. Uh, and with that, I think we'll move to the next and final panel of this workshop. This time with uh, projects which are uh, with uh, your TRL. So Andrea, I will let you introduce this last panel. Yeah, thank you, Regis. Yeah, indeed, uh, the last section of the workshop is dedicated to demonstration, uh, demonstration actions for uh, renewable living and cooling in buildings. So we are moving to higher tier health. Uh, we'll have again uh, four um, ongoing uh, H2020 projects. So we'll start from the first one, uh, which is uh, Geofic. Uh, and will be presented by Marco Galderoni from Artwem Solution, we, uh, which is the coordinator of Geofic. Uh, his main expertise is on renewable heating and cooling and is the chairman of the European Solar Thermal Panel and upcoming president of the renewable heat with the technology platform. So, Marco, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. I guess you can see my screen now, and I hope you can see me prop, uh, hear me properly. So, um, this is uh, a presentation about the Geofit project. I'll try to focus uh, rather on the partial results we have uh, reached so far and keep it very short uh, about the project. So, this is just a sum, summary slide. Uh, Geofit is um first of all about geothermal retrofitting uh, so keyword retrofitting is very important uh, it's a four-year project meanwhile four and a half we have 24 partners um, and it's a roughly 10 million cost project you see below uh, the all the partners the ones with the circle around uh, following also uh, my mouse um, pointer, those are, let's say, uh, technology suppliers. All the rest are uh, consultancy companies and uh, design experts, uh, people drilling, etc., etc. Okay, um, now the next slide. Okay, here it is. This is uh, the approach of Geofit. So Geofit is uh, first of all, uh, not about ground. Okay, great. You have now an ambulance. Sorry for that. Um, is not about groundbreaking te technologies. We're rather using uh, existing technologies, innovative, if you will, but not really groundbreaking, uh, in a smart way 
at, uh, at the system level, let's say. And it's also about uh, building up a tool set which supports the entire process, as you see here, of design, uh, uh, in, so planning design, installation and operation. And it's very much about building up design know-how. Um, okay, so we have five pilots. Uh, one is a historical building, top left. One is a primary school, top right. In the center, we have a university building in France. We have a sports center, actually a swimming pool. And which I consider very, uh, one of the strengths of the project, a residential building as well. Um, very small one on the Iron Island in, in uh, Ireland. Okay, so now I'm trying to, I will try to focus on, on the main problems identified and which solutions uh, Geofit is uh, trying to provide or did actually already provide. So one, first of all, um, for those of you who uh, are familiar with geothermal, you, f you for sure know that geothermal planning process is uh, quite complex because many skills are required around the same table. Uh, starting of course from ground, knowledge of the ground, knowledge of drilling techniques, uh, and then we have of course all the heat pump uh, issues, and then we have uh, the heating or cooling, dis cold distribution system inside the buildings. Uh, how are we uh, trying to, to answer to those uh, requirements? First of all, with what we call IDDS, it's an integrated design and delivery solution so it's basically a design approach uh, which uh, is meant to involve as many technicians uh, as possible in an organized let's say uh, way and by having uh, the Spanish um, uh, body for standardization providing us with the knowledge about uh, all the applicable standards of course. Uh, another po problem I wasn't aware about because I was no expert on, on geothermal, meanwhile I hope I am a little bit more, it's uh, freezing of the ground. So when, when you start doing calculations you, you realize that uh, as long as you don't really bore, uh, dig a lot of boreholes or excavate a lot of um, uh, baskets, earth baskets, etc. You will in the long run uh, reduce uh, the temperature of the ground more and more until it may even freeze, so go below zero. And this is something which requires uh, special attention, therefore design of the heat exchangers is crucial and we are providing we will be providing um, uh, let's say an environment for a calculation of uh, of ground source heat exchangers another big problem are underground utilities uh, other another stuff I didn't I wasn't really aware about but if you start uh, as we are doing with a ground penetrating radar to uh, inspect the the soil you may uh, realize that there are many pipes, for example, as is, is happening in our Bordeaux pilots, which the owner of the pilot is, was not even aware about. And then you need to uh, rethink the process of, uh, of uh, let's say, drilling or excavating. Um, of course, we all know most of the projects presented today do have uh, some heat pumps uh, in, in among their technologies. So we all know that heat pumps work best when the return temperature is uh, as low as possible. And this is quite complex because it entails um, as well, and especially the heating or cooling distribution system inside the building. There are many things to take into account and uh, therefore, once again, uh, importance of design and of uh, advanced or an anyhow um, uh, robust technologies in terms of heat distribution and cold distribution, low temperature heating, high temperature cooling. We have specific deliverables in that. Beam components for geothermal are not available, not commonly at least. Uh, we are developing beam libraries. And last but not least, uh, when it comes to the market, we all know that geothermal heating and cooling is currently still underdeveloped compared to its potential. Uh, how we're trying, among others, to answer to this problem by doing uh, uh, quite a, an extensive market analysis. The first version is already on the website and uh, a second one will follow at the end of the project. Here, uh, I'm coming to the, to the end. We see just some 
interesting pictures of earth baskets, so uh, a particular way of uh, using ground source heat. We see, of course, horizontal uh, heat exchangers, trenchless excavation. We see a ground penetrating radar. We're using, among others, I didn't mention this, uh, structural health monitoring technologies to make sure the buildings uh, do not um, undergo problems, uh, structural problems, during the drilling phase. So we're in, employing radars, we're employing um, accelerometers. This is, for example, the result of the point cloud um, result outcome of a drone survey. And finally, we have high temperature uh, compression heat pumps, sorption heat pumps, both uh, with low GVP. This is one of the main, one of the important uh, objectives of the project. Um, we have uh, Uponer's um, uh, high temperature cooling slash low temperature heating. So basically, uh, floor heating. We have mechanical ventilation with heat recovery, and we also have uh, smart um, control assets. Con, um, considering as well uh, the flexi the option the possibility of providing flexibility to the to the grid this is something we will be testing in at least one of the pilots most probably the one in uh, Galway Ireland and that's it I for those who are interested and will download the presentation I prepared a list of the in my opinion, most relevant public deliverables, uh, which are somehow related to what I've been saying so far. And I think, uh, of course, uh, we'll be happy if uh, if we get some people downloading those uh, in the hope that those are really interesting and make the difference. And that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Marco, for the next presentation. So we can move to the next one which is uh, the Sun Horizon project presented by Alessandra Cuneo, uh, who received her PhD in Turbo Machinery and Energy Systems Engineering at the University of Genoa in 2017. And she is now at, at RENA, uh, consulting SPA. And she's now coordinating the Sun Horizon project. So Alessandra, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Andrea, for the introduction. And good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so I will uh, show you and describe you Sun Horizon project, uh, which is a project started two years ago uh, related to the integration of solar technologies with innovative heat pumps. So the project started in October 2019 and it's four year project. So we are uh, already finishing the first two years. Uh, the project is composed, the consortium is composed by 20 partners around Europe, uh, both from energy utility side, building owners, technology providers, as well as, of course, research companies. Which is the vision, which is the objective of Sun Horizon? The aim is to start with two of the main acceptance technologies available nowadays for dating and cooling, which is our solar panels and heat pump, and properly integrated heat with a thermal energy storage to uh, cover the heating and cooling demand of building. In particular, six different technologies from the solar field and the heat pump field are uh, under development during the project uh, to increase the performance and decrease the operational costs and the capital costs and integrated them in what we call uh, the technology package. And I will show you briefly uh, in the next slide what I mean. And with this technology package, it will be integrated and demonstrated in seven demo sites around Europe. Among that, so in parallel with the uh, advancement and uh, research on technology level, there is another pillar of the project which is related to the functional monitoring and the control of these technologies to cover the heating and cooling demand of the building. So which are the technology under development right now? So we have in particular two uh, technology from the solar field we have hybrid PV panels from Dual Sun, uh, and we have vacuum solar thermal panels from TVP Solar to 
uh, low, cover low temperature around 90, 10, uh, 100 degrees. We have uh, uh, a thermal compression heat pump from Bucit and an hybrid absorption compressor cascade chiller from Fahrenheit. Some of these technology have already present in a, a previous project. And then we have an hybridization of heat pump, solar and thermal and PV panel from VDR and a stratified thermal storage tank from Rassio. And all these technology providers are working and they have just finished uh, in these months, even if for some of them there are some delays caused by COVID in the uh, development of a new product starting from an already high TRL level. So uh, they not started from the scratch, they already have some prototypes or similar product like TVP that were properly modified for the scope of Sunrise. And this six technology has been integrated in five different technology packages, which is the integration of different technology. In all of them, there is always the stratified thermal storage tank to cover the space heating, the domestic hot water demand, and uh, the cooling demand of the building. And in the first two years of the project, we identified and we already uh, evaluate uh, how to integrate these technologies. So the hydraulic layout uh, tailored uh, for the specific constraints and needs of the building included and uh, in the project. Which are the buildings? We have eight different demo sites around Europe. We have a small residential building, large residential building, tertiary buildings such as offices, but also from swimming pool and sports center. And they are around Europe, in Germany, Spain, Belgium, and Latvia. And this will help us to uh, demonstrate the wide uh, potential of our solution because we are able to cover a wide range of building and a wide range of markets, a wide range of climates. So the integration of the different technology will be demonstrated in a, a very uh, wide range of conditions. Uh, of course, in parallel, uh, as I said, um, there is a huge part of work related to the uh, monitoring platform are related to smart control. So the idea is to develop a tool that uh, starting from a data monitoring platform will develop the integrated smart control uh, system uh, based on prediction technique, self-learning, decision-making strategies, and of course, end user interactions. So we have uh, an app that uh, has been developed by a partner that is uh, the end user directly use it to provide feedback on their thermal comfort in the building. And this feedback will be integrated in the control strategies of the control of the integrated control system of Sun Horizon to make decision and to modify the set point, for example, of the heat pump to increase the thermal comfort of the end users. And of course, the, the control strategies, as well as uh, all the decision, are uh, slightly different based on if the control system will be integrated in a small residential or in a large residential building or in a tertiary building in which uh, the end users are not always the same. So, for example, in the swimming pool, the end users are the user of the swimming pool. So. Uh, the aim is more related to the building owner. So uh, the idea of Sun Horizon is to produce a significant impact in the energy efficiency of the building to increase the energy efficiency and reduce the primary, the primary energy and, of course, the path related to the emission. For the moment, we uh, in the first two years, we developed the layout of the technology package and perform several simulation uh, to evaluate which could be the impact uh, in terms of primary energy reduction, in terms of operational cost reduction and emission reduction. And now we are in the phase of um, the tender procedures and the detailed engineering uh, design for the installation of the technology package 
in the buildings will be uh, finished, uh, we hope, uh, it depends on the COVID, uh, in uh, one year from now, more or less. And uh, just to uh, clarify and specify that um, in some demo, our technology package will completely uh, substitute the existing heating uh, and cooling system. So the old one will be removed and will be substituted by power, while in other case, uh, the two systems, so the existing one and the Sun Horizon one, will be run in parallel. It depends, of course, on uh, the energy demand of the buildings and the size of technology that need to be installed. And for the moment, the main challenge that we are faced is related to the integration of the different heating and cooling technologies and mostly related to how integrate our solution in existing heating and cooling system in the buildings. So uh, make the best solution for the retrofitting, considering the space constraints, the constraints, for example, on the roof, stability, because we are going to install solar panel, uh, constraints on the temperature of the existing system, so the temperature of the radiators, etc. And another important aspect is related to the social acceptance of the end users. So when we go to the end user, we propose our solution. It's not always simple and easy to uh, engage them and uh, that this kind of technology are well accepted by uh, the energy citizen. So that all for my side of course follow the project by on the website and on our social media and i'm here to answer your question uh, after, during the question and answer time or just write me an email after the workshop thank you thank you alessandra so we can move ahead to the next presentation which is about the hybrid bio vgv uh, project which will be presented by Zabol Varga, which is a coordinated researcher at the Institute of Science and Innovation in Mechanical and Industrial Engineering from Porto in Portugal. And yeah, he has coordinated and participated in more than 15 research projects over the last 20 years. So please, Zabol, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope you can see my presentation. Can you confirm that? And you, I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes, please. Okay, thank you very much. Um, first of all, let me express my my gratitude for being part of this uh, workshop. I'm I'm very happy to be part uh, of this group of of um, such an excellent uh, list of projects. Um, I'm here as the coordinator of the hybrid BioVG project to to give you some ideas what what we are doing within this uh, work. The Hybrid bio VG project stands for Hybrid uh, Viable, viable um, Geometry Ejector Cooling and Heating System for Buildings Driven by Solar and Biomass Heat. This is a project that is more or less halfway through uh, at this moment. Well, uh, when I heard that uh, we will have relatively short time to, to present uh, our work, I was looking at some, some ideas and, and looked on the net how to make a short presentation that has a high impact. So, and they all agreed that start with a joke. Um, I, I was in trouble because I'm not a very good joke teller. But uh, anyway, I tried to keep this idea and then I found this very interesting uh, quote from, from Donald Trump that you, you all know. And uh, I think it was it was funny, so I decided to to include it in my presentation. That says climate change was a hoax invented by the Chinese to make U.S. manufacturing less competitive. But I said, okay, I should comment on this as well somehow. But I found an excellent comment from uh, a public figure that probably many of you knows that. Uh, he answered more or less to this uh, statement of Donald Trump saying that global warming isn't real because I, I was called today. And also great news worth Hungary is over because I just stayed. I think this answers very well uh, this statement that, uh, or this statement of Donald Trump. And I think it answers also a little bit of the effort that we are doing. Um, 
And um, the second uh, point that was uh, was suggested that keep it simple and and uh, uh, chase to the point. So I'll try to do that in my presentation. So uh, the big question when we thought about the bi hybrid biovigil project is is what are the big questions anyway? And the problem is that we, we lack of affordable and integrated solutions, this term we heard today several times, for renewable indoor space heating, for renewable indoor space cooling, for intelligent and, and suitable control system, improved year-round efficiency, and also a very important issue is the increased compactness. So that's how we came up a solution that we will build uh, system that we call hybrid bio, bio VGE that uses solar thermal energy as as a principal heat source but when needed also biomass energy and then this provides indoor space cooling heating domestic hot water and eventually depending on the situation we can also provide the pool heating so that overall efficiency of the system can be uh, improved. We're gonna, within the project, we are building three top prototypes, two units uh, in the range of five, 15 kilowatt of cooling and heating, which would be a residential application, and uh, one unit of 20 and 50 kilowatt cooling and heating capacities, which would be like a small commercial application. The system configuration is not exactly as you can see on this uh, figure, but uh, the major components are uh, here and they are they are correct. So we have um, the uh, solar collector field. We are doing some innovation work in that. So we are uh, aiming to reduce actually the cost of, of the collector field by about 15%. We are doing also innovation regarding the biomass boiler. We are aiming at um, uh, fuel flexibility uh, in this um, component. We are also implementing PCM storage. In these particular prototypes, it will be cold storage. We are also uh, developing a variable geometry jet or chiller. Uh, this is a technology that um, I've been working on personally for a few years now, and uh, we are looking at improved efficiency, uh, improved COP, and uh, heat distribution and dissipation. And what is very important, we heard today again, an integrated control system. Uh, three prototypes will be installed in different locations in Europe uh, with different uh, climate characteristics. Uh, we will install one of the prototypes in a new family home um, near Porto, which is a more um, cooling demand location. And we will install another prototype at Raspersville. We, we heard today a uh, representative from, from Raspersville. Um, this is going to be, this uh, prototype will, will undergo the CCT test, the concise cycle test at Raspersville. And we will build uh, the larger prototype will be installed at um, in Steyr in Austria, which is a more heating demand uh, climate condition. The consortium itself is very uh, small compared to some of the previously heard um, projects. We are only seven partners. Uh, in Enshi, where I uh, work, is the coordinator of the project. And then we have uh, three academic partners, University of Graz, uh, University of Bologna, and uh, the Applied Science University in Switzerland, which is now, we heard again today, that is now called OST and not HSR. And three industrial partners, Hargastner from Austria, who's also from Austria, and Complex from, from Poland. Well, uh, the, third, uh, com or the third recommendation when I learned how to make an 
impact of a short presentation. They said that make your presentation short. So I hope I did sufficiently short, but I gave you sufficient information. So uh, thank you for your attention and um, I'm, I'm finishing here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Zabal. I, I think, yeah, you, you make a very, made a very good presentation. So thank you. So we can then move to the last one, which is uh, the presentation about the Read for Cool project, which will be presented by Rossano Scoccia from Politecnico di Milano. He's a researcher and adjunct professor at the Department of Energy at the Politecnico of Milano, and is mainly working on HVAC and uh, renewable solution uh, since 2000, no, since 10 years. Okay, so Rossano, please, the floor is yours. Please unmute yourself, Rosano. We can't hear you. Thank you. Thank you. So here you see the partners of, uh, of the project. We are 13. Thank you, Andrea, for the presentation of myself. And we are there are a lot of uh, small, medium enterprises and then some research institutes. And we are the coordinator of Politecnico di Milano, Department of Energy. So the project started in October 2016 and it's ending in April 2021 due to the extension due to the COVID emergency. And the goal is to demonstrate an easy to install energy efficient system for heating and cooling at both the building level and the district level. And uh, we want to achieve at least 30% of energy savings, uh, a payback time lower than 10 years, and to uh, have a good developed uh, business model. Uh, we are almost at the end of the project and we are already achieving good results, so the, the goals uh, are uh, quite uh, achieved. So the main tools and system we uh, developed in this uh, project was uh, five, the five that you see here in, in, this, uh, in this slide. There is the building retrofitting design planner tool and then we installed in one pilot a solar thermal field with an electric heat pump and an absorption chiller. On another one, a photovoltaic uh, field with an electric heat pump and a, and a phase change uh, material storage. And in the uh, district level, we install a wastewater heat recovery system. Here you see some picture of our installation. And another uh, important outcome of our project is the self-correcting intelligent building energy management system. Uh, which uh, work with uh, the uh, case two and the case three in, in this slide. And um, so uh, about the building retrofitting design planner tool, we think this is a key uh, element for the uh, replication of our outcome. And here uh, you see a case where we are comparing a current state with one of the solution we propose in our Heat for Cool project, which is the use of an absorption uh, heat pump, uh, silica gel based, with the solar uh, collector field. And uh, the idea is to have a web app uh, easy to be used by designer, but also by a private person, non-technical person. So here you see the front end where you have to, to insert few uh, information, and then the software managed to run uh, a simulation for the baseline and some simulation for some scenarios using all the technologies developed by the Hate for Cool project. And here you see in this uh, part of the slide uh, what will be the, uh, the outcome. So you will get some KPI and a ranking of the different simulations uh, which were run. Uh, now I move to the four pilots we, we did. Uh, the first one, in, it's in Spain, in Valencia, in a warm climate. And uh, the building, it's a four floors with 12 apartments, 600 square meters, and around 30 tenants. Uh, here we have a solar thermal field of around 50 square meter, uh, coupled with an absorption heat pump developed by Fahrenheit as others uh, today in this, uh, in this slot uh, use these technologies. And then we have a, a couple of storages, one for the uh, hot, uh, of for the heating energy from the solar field and one for the cooling energy from the absorption 
a heat pump that can work as a chiller in this case. And then we have some uh, backup system, which in this case are air to water heat pump, of course, are reversible. So you can use also as, as a chiller. And then the second case study, it's in Chorzów in Poland. So a, a colder climate. Here we have a PV field, which uh, feed an air to water heat pump. And this air to water heat pump, it's coupled with the phase change material storage. In this case, we give so energy for heating and for domestic hot water. The energy for the domestic hot water is storage in the phase change material. And in the third pilot, we have a situation, a, a, a plant similar to the one uh, in uh, Chorzo that you showed before. And, uh, but it's just smaller. So I skip it for time reason. And I move to the last one, which is a, a district uh, system pilot. It's huge. You have around uh, 2,500 uh, square meter of floor area. And in this case, the technology that we are studying, it's the exploitation of the wastewater as energy sink or energy source to a heat pump. So in function of, of the season, of course, you use it as an energy sink or energy source, because as you can see here, the temperature uh, makes uh, the uh, thermal lift on the heat pump uh, lower in comparison of the use of the external air. So uh, some uh, remarks uh, about the project. Uh, we, uh, we, our goal was to uh, define action uh, for the retrofit of the HVAC system of existing buildings uh, using what is over there. Indeed, uh, in the two cases, residential in Sofia and in Chorzo, we use uh, the boiler, the existing gas boiler already there as backup to our solutions. In this way, we managed to achieve a good uh, payback period of our solution. At the same time, we achieve also a good uh, primary energy savings around 20-30%. I want to highlight that a, a key point along this uh, long project of four years initially, now even more, was the part where we did the modeling and simulation of the uh, different solutions, because the key point is the uh, size of the different components. If you want to achieve uh, the uh, challenging uh, goals that we have, so as I said initially, a, a key point for the replicability will be the tool we developed, which is called RetroSim, uh, as long as with uh, the um, with the uh, solution that we did, which are. Uh, relatively easy to be installed, monitored, and controlled. Uh, we are doing the monitoring of, uh, of the system, and the data will be published on our website, hitforcool.eu, and also on the platform, on the European platform called Smart Cities Info System, where you can find already some, some information. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You. And uh, we we had some uh, technical questions in parallel for some specific projects. So thanks very much uh, for the to the audience for asking that. And uh, again, we are um, dealing with them uh, with each uh, speaker because these are very technical questions. Um, we we do have also generic uh, questions. So this time for all of the speakers of this last panel. Uh, the question is, which role do you see in intelligent control solutions for year-round efficient, sorry, my uh, screen went out, for year-round efficient operation of integrated renewable heating cooling systems? So it's again a question related to yeah, ICT and control solutions applied to the various technologies that you presented. I don't know if I could make some uh, notes regarding to that because um, fortunately soon I have to leave. I ha I'm teaching a class in a couple of minutes. So um, this this is a question that, uh, that comes back in all workshop panels, I think. Um, uh, as we heard, especially in, uh, also we heard the first speaker today, that um, since uh, um, 
at least in, in this panel, we, we are talking about uh, uh, technologies that have already a TRL relatively high. We are still facing the same problem of how to, how to get um, these individual uh, technologies to work together so that they eventually efficiently um, they operate together efficiently, not as uh, only the individual components. I think it's a very, very important issue and I think a lot of work is needed to be done there. I think this is something that um, needs these projects probably address, but I think there should be a, an overall project that addresses uh, only this topic. So I think that that's basically the critical part in these projects in a certain sense. Uh, if I may uh, step in, um, I, I, I take what, uh, what you just said. Uh, I agree. Um, I think from the control perspective, when it comes to the technical to technical issues, uh, one thing that is needed is uh, intelligent control in the sense that uh, when you couple technologies and uh, one of the questions in the in the messaging window was uh, whether in Geofit we plan to um, regenerate some heat into the ground. The answer is yes. In at least one of the pilots, we will be doing this, which means we'll have another technology which has will have to be switched on or off depending on the conditions. So the coupling of a geothermal heat pump and the dry cooler or a solar thermal uh, collector field requires an in intelligence and in, uh, pardon me a control system which is intelligent enough to understand and decide whether today it is better to use the one or the other and this is definitely not trivial this uh, in the at the very end would uh, require a, a very complex analysis so probably today with an intelligent uh, artificial intelligence you can do it to some extent in a simpler way. I mean, the, the software behind is very complex, but for the end users, user, it's probably a bit easier. So this is for sure uh, an important uh, issue. Thank you very much, Marco. Alessandra Rossano, perhaps you want to add a few words? Yeah, totally agree on what uh, has been already highlighted by uh, my colleague before. So also in uh, our project, from our experience, uh, uh, the main problem is uh, when we you integrate different technologies, how to properly control them for enhance the potential of each of them, the performance of each of them towards the uh, main objective of all these projects that have, which are related to the primary energy savings, uh, to the reduction of the cost and the mission. So, if you would like to have a an important impact on these uh, parameters, on this condition, you need to have intelligent control that are able to predict what will happen the day after and decide how to manage the technologies to cover the demand and request of the end users. And the end users need to be an important, uh, um, an important uh, actor in uh, in that because based on their feedback on how they would use the technologies the control could properly work thank you alessandra rosano yes i, I fully agree uh, already the colleagues said what, what i had in mind uh, in our project indeed we develop also a self correcting intelligent building energy management system because as we said, we are using technologies with renewable energies and uh, with these technologies, it's very important to uh, predict the future. So nowadays it's possible to have weather forecast for uh, two, three days, very accurate. So it's possible to do the so-called model predictive control uh, in the reality. So definitely agree. Otherwise uh, you can't achieve the high uh, energy, uh, high, high savings that we declare otherwise. Thanks very much, Rosano. We we do have uh, some additional questions, but they are quite technical and for some specific projects. So we are monitoring and recording everything, and uh, I think that the speakers are going to get back to you. Uh, I would say individually after the workshop. Uh, since now we just have five minutes to to conclude and close this one, so I will give back the floor to Andrea, and perhaps uh, to Olga as well from the European Commission. 
for some. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. I, just, I would like, first of all, to thank you all for attending and presenting these very uh, interesting projects. So, uh, if you all agree, I will say that Olga can just give us the, her feedback and uh, in, uh, closing the, the workshop officially. And then I would like to ask you all to switch on your camera so Regis can take uh, a nice picture of us all together before closing the workshop. Okay. I know Sabolini needs to leave. So thank you very much, uh, Andrea, for giving me the floor. I think it's quite difficult to make a common conclusion in this because we covered very, very uh, different topics. And uh, But what is reality is that uh, we are on the good way, I think, to uh, to giving answers of the needs we have. Uh, however, what I can say, uh, considering the answers also of the speakers, that probably we need better coordination. I think this event, the importance of this event, is to see whether we have common things to discuss and create like clusters of projects in order to help each other in order to look for standards for uh, some, coordin uh, some standards in the way that we can communicate the systems in the future, because for sure, probably it's not a single one, but different ones, you know, that we need to use. Um, I think that uh, it was very, very thankful from the, from the, uh, proje uh, from the projects that we are presenting their results and also they are concerns. And I think that, uh, okay, they are really the ones that are developing these systems that we need. But uh, in general, what I can see about the different technologies presented and also the status of these technologies, we, we are in the good way. And we can advance more in the area. So I think we will meet our targets in the future. Thank you very much to all of you and for making this very interesting uh, uh, event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Olga. So uh, as suggested by uh, Andrea, if you could please all turn your camera on, I will try to make a group picture of all of us. It's quite impressive. I think we get the award of the most crowded uh, sustainable places workshop. Yeah, that's great. I don't know if we have everyone now. I'm taking a first one. I know I missed Gabrielle. I'm taking another one, Susanna, yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much to everyone. Um, Thanks again for all the presentations. Uh, again, uh, everything has been recorded, so we'll put the, the recording online on the Sustainable Places website. We'll also put the presentations available because this is quite a long recording and we can imagine that uh, some people will be interested to go directly to your presentation. So in case you had some edits, please send, uh, send us send me actually the latest version of your uh, presentation and we'll make sure to make it available uh, and finally we i remind you that the, tomorrow is the last day of sustainable places we've got the closing session in which uh, andrea will have a very difficult task to to present the the key findings that we had today to summarize in like two minutes <laughs> what we said in uh, three hours so i will do my best to, yeah to join that Thanks again from my side and uh, have a good night. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.